Leo's Legion, week 18 is now in the books. Let me ask you this, bitter disappointment, utter heartbreak, exactly what you expected. What happened? We were this close to first place. Let's toss it around with the three bros now. Lovable Legion Leo fans out there in Leo land. Three down bros here. Greg, Arthur, Roland looking at this past game against the Bombers. For all the marbles for first place, first round by into the playoffs was that close. Are you disappointed? Is it what you expected? I know it's what somebody in this room expected. Hate it when his predictions come true sometimes. But hey, let's <laughs> look around guys. Let's toss it around with the bros, see what happened. Did we let? Did we snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? Did we blow it? Is Winnipeg just that much better? We failed to slay the dragon, and this is starting to look like Canucks Blackhawks for all those playoff games. Don't like it, Arthur. What's up? Tale of two halves, Greg. Tale of two halves. I think first half, BC full marks for a ten-point lead. We were there, and it looked like wow. All right, I think they how to amp up um, and then bring that intensity and they look, look great on defense they look great on offense everything was going well into the first half second half it's a completely different story and if it wasn't for those takeaways by the defense this game would have been close so to my response to you Greg is DC great first half terrible second half almost stole the win you just needed an inch here or there Roland what do you think uh, yeah I must admit you you predicted the win and our, our our heads were with you our hearts were not I predicted a 10 point win by BC and for a, a whole part of the game I thought you know there was a possibility we were leading by 10 but it wasn't meant to be um, you know BC was strong Strong out of the gate, but you know, faltered after the first half. Just uh, lost steam on on the offense. The defense was was you know a hundred percent all the way. Yes, they made mistakes. They weren't perfect, but what do you expect? They did everything for us. They gave us the takeaways. Uh, and, you know, they almost got us a touchdown, uh, but we couldn't score when we needed to. Off the offense couldn't score. Um, yeah, it's a tough, tough, tough loss uh, because we should have won. We should have won based on how we started. Um, but kudos to, to to Winnipeg. They are, uh, we have to admit, they are a better team, a better all-around team. Uh, BC was, you know, strong in many areas, but our weakest area, the running game, made us a one-dimensional team, and mm -hmm. and that allowed Winnipeg to really focus. I think on the second half, and mm -hmm. and and that's that's kind of how they, you know, in spite of in spite of their mistakes in the second half, they were still still able to pull it through. So, so tough loss. The silver lining, I think, and I mentioned this to you guys after the game, the silver lining is that had we won this game, there's a possibility that we would not have recognized the severity of our weaknesses and thought that, yeah, you know, we, 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 you know, we were, were up there with, with Winnipeg. This loss kind of forces us to, to kind of realize that, hey, we, we got we to gotta overcome these weaknesses. We're going to meet them again. It's going to be a, a longer road, a, a harder you know, detour, but we're still going to meet them again. Uh, assuming, of course, we take care of Saskatchewan, which, you know, I hope you're not predicting a Saskatchewan win, uh, Arthur. <laughs> As of right now, no, but we still have uh, three more weeks in the CFL. <laughs> That's to true. See how that uh, goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned it was a game of inches, Arthur, and there were so many situations through that game we'll probably look at those during our high level thoughts but there was inches away from making a sack on zach and he got the ball just over the defender's head for you know second down conversion or just big chunks on first down inches away from a third down gamble to get a new set of downs and possibly run the clock out of the game inches off of a receiver's hands in the end zone for touchdowns 
inches from calls of pass interference to not calls of pass interference. Man, I tell you, they say football is a game of inches, and no more true was it than that Saturday, uh, that Friday night. And uh, you know what? I don't know. Did we we had our concerns? The running game, the line, the trenches, playing for 60 minutes, coming out with intensity, strength. We seem to have all of that, except for the same things that we talk about. But did the Lions play for that full 60 minutes? I mean, whether Winnipeg made adjustments or not, did we give the same effort for that full 60 minutes, or did we take a low? I think defense did, offense did not. Uh, even special teams did. Special teams was, you know, we were, we held uh, Janera and Grant in check, and I was very oh, nervous big time. with him coming back. Uh, so, uh, so I think I think this loss is was, is squarely on the offense, uh, not on the first half, but but in the second half. Well, I mean, when you're when you're leading. And I mean, k- kudos to Winnipeg, a road team, like Arthur says, you're a road team, you keep it to within two scores, and really two scores of a touchdown and a field goal for a team of Winnipeg's caliber, that's, that's you know, not, not, not even enough to make, them, to make them flinch. But, you know, I remember when Arthur was predicting the, the uh, <clears throat> outcome, he says, is Janarian Grant coming back? And at the time, we said, no, he's not. And then, what, a couple days before the game happens, he's back, and I'm like, uh-oh. But yeah, huge credit to the special teams for keeping him in check. I mean, he's well rested too. And he couldn't get on track, which is a great thing. But when you're leading by 10 points going into that half, do you make adjustments or do you just keep going with the status quo because it's been working for you? Because I mean, obviously if you're losing and it's beating you, you make adjustments. But then when Winnipeg started to gain that momentum back, I don't think we made the necessary adjustments on both sides of the ball. But we'll take a look at that in our high level thoughts, Roland. Take her away. All right. So first off, let's uh, let's take a look at this. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you. It's a uh, Thanksgiving Monday as we record this. Um, this is the the two presidents of the club uh, giving away. Um, were they? Was it free? I think it was free, right? It was a turkey dinner. Yes, it was a free turkey dinner. Yeah. So we missed it. We were we were there at the tailgate, but we didn't see it. So I don't know if we were just a bit too late or we didn't, weren't in the right place. But. Um, Anyway, we're going to have to talk to the head office about that, being three <laughs> down bros and making this team relevant. We're going to have to get the inside track on some of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, happy Thanksgiving to all. So, let's, let's jump into... So, uh, we, we thought we'll try this for the first time. Uh, we, we put together a chart uh, that, that shows every single drive of the game. Uh, we thought this would be a good kind of high-level view of how, how the game went. And it kind of gives us the ebb and flow uh, of the game, right? So, so after the initial kickoff... Uh, BC got the ball. We got a nine-play drive, uh, went down 56 yards, and kicked a field goal. And then it was Winnipeg's turn. They started from their 40. Uh, in six plays, they went 40, 46 yards and had a missed field goal. So at this point, I was feeling good. <laughs> I was feeling good. You know, they didn't score on the first drive while well, we did. It would have been nice to do a touchdown. But on our next drive, we scored a, a touchdown, a 12, 12 play drive for 86 yards. So so you know, at this point, I was feeling good. Uh, you know, how how are you guys feeling at this point? We were up ten nothing. I mean, ten nothing. BC had two had two possessions. Winnipeg had one, but Winnipeg drove the field. Yes. Down to the twenty four yard line, they missed a field goal, which was like it's a short field goal for Castillo. So I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm glad we're up ten nothing. But you know, Winnipeg only had one drive, and they they. They did drive the field, so I'm um, all my all my concerns coming into this game. Um, I mean, no, nothing's dissuaded me from a Winnipeg win at this point. Yeah, okay. but I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy we're up to nothing for sure. Yeah, I mean, drives culminating in points versus. I remember we talked about that before uh, before the game. Our predictions: as long as BC is not going two and out, two and out, two and out, and giving Winnipeg these long drives and exhausting our defense. I mean, we were getting points. I mean, yes, the first one would have been a, nice to be a touchdown, but at least two two possessions score, scoring both times, right? Uh, exactly. So I was, I was satisfied. I was happy. Great start. Not, yeah, great start with, for sure. Not with the way they drove the field on their first drive. I'm like, whoa, defense doesn't look ready. That was my first thought. They did not look ready. Yeah. So anyway, so after after our touchdown, Winnipeg gets the ball back. Uh, they... Um, they start under 38. They drive down to the BC 24 and get another field goal. So now, now it's 10-3. Uh, that was eight drives, and then we get the ball back, 
and in one play we make 70 yards <laughs> at this point i was i was really excited uh, you know you know that but the only thing i was a bit worried was it was too fast our defense didn't get a rest i mean you know they they, they just got off the field and then now they're back on and and sure enough, uh, on the next drive, um, Winnipeg drives down 93 yards down the field and gets a touchdown. Three plays roll in. Yeah, three plays. Three plays. Well, our defense was tired. They, they had eight plays the previous drive. Yeah. And then they, they just got to sit down and then they're back up again. Mm-hmm. So, so that's tough, right? Uh, so emotionally, you'd think they'd, have, they'd be buoyed by the, you know, rups. 14 points let's just you know get them to an out yeah you're tired yeah you just sat down but the game's still early let's just you know if it's we keep scoring touchdowns would it be scoring field goals it's a good thing yeah. it's a good team on the other side there gregory yeah it i is, know yeah. i know but i mean if it, it that way it started if they could have just kept it but i mean well i mean it's, i know i know you you like the emotion side and yeah. hey you've got a big surge of energy the other team has got a big surge of energy as well right? yeah that's right and they they, they say hey we're down 17 to 3 we got to pick it up and they did yeah and we'll talk about more about their oh, yeah. And it's yeah. A, they know how to win exactly but yeah so then we get the ball back and then uh this is painful we get a two and out um, so you know they they answered our touchdown with a touchdown and then we get a two and out so that uh, that was that was tough. That was uh, starting, uh, you know, our offense was starting to uh, s- sputter out a bit. But on the next drive, our defense comes through and gets an interception. So Both the field again, Greg. What was that? Uh, Eighty-one yards. Yeah, exactly. Yep, they, they drove the field. They, they drove the field, and and that that interception just snuffed it out. So so that that would be a morale booster for for a lesser team, right? But but we've seen time and time again Winnipeg kudos again to them. They don't they don't suffer these things. You know they they, they pick themselves up. But anyway, it's interception there. We get the ball back. At this point, we should have scored. Our offense needed to score here. Yep. Well, they at least they flipped the field. They did. They like they was on they're on their ten and they got got it and then they punted to the Winnipeg six. Yeah. I mean you're deep and as long as you flip the field, that's okay. I'm I'm willing to take that. Of yeah. course, I want always want points. You always want touchdowns. But if you can flip the field and you're on your ten, I take that. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, but but because it took us nine drives, you can see the difference here. Our, our defense, uh, you know, was able to to get a two and mm-hmm. out right away. So, so that's wonderful. Uh, we get the ball back. Uh, with the last play of the quarter, I believe this was right. Yeah, yeah last play yeah. of the quarter, and uh, we were able to get a field goal because they got a, this is two and out deep in the Winnipeg zone. So and so, um, Williams oh. was able to return it. Yes, that was a good return on special teams. Yeah, yeah. Greg loved Greg loved to see that. Yeah, yeah. Williams Williams is uh, is kind of you know turning out to be quite quite. Quite a positive thing when at the beginning of the season we're quite negative. <laughs> <laughs> Not there yet. <laughs> okay. All right. So so we end we end the first half with uh, with another three there. So what was the score here? Now we're at twenty to ten. Twenty to ten. Yeah. So. Okay. What your, your point? So I'll ask you, Roland. At okay. 20, at half time, how are you feeling? Well, I turned to you, right, and I said, "This mm-hmm. is my prediction: ten points. Can we hold it?" <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> He did say that. He did say oh, that. Oh, guys. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, yeah, you're looking good so far. I know, but that's just half a game. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't meant to be. So I wasn't feeling that sad. So I was, I was tense. I was tense. Yeah. Because 2010 is great, but Winnipeg gets that ball. For, and then they're making adjustments in that locker room, you know, while that halftime's going on. And I, I, was, I was worried. I was worried. Yeah. So, so uh, third quarter comes out. Uh, uh, Winnipeg gets the ball. Uh, they they do seven drives for 43 yards, and they get a field goal. Uh, we get the ball back. Uh, we do 10 yards for uh, 10, 10 plays for 62 yards, and we also get a field goal. So, at this point, we're trading field goals, uh, and then Winnipeg um, gets the ball back. Five plays, 55 yards, another field goal. 
I was for that one. I was scared because they got to the 15 yard line. I'm like, oh, yeah. in the red zone. But yeah, yep. that's right. But our, our, our defense stiffened up, so you know, kudos to them. And then uh, here again, this is painful. We get the ball back, and we don't answer. We get a, a two and out. And and then they get it back on their 50. Yeah. Now, this 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 was kind of interesting because they started on their 50. Uh, and then they got, got all the way to our 27 yard and we sack and do a fumble. Uh, you know, a, a strip, strip the ball and, and they fumble it and we, we get possession with them not scoring, not even a field goal. So uh, at this point, we had, a, we had a friend come with us. Uh, he, hasn't come to, uh, he, he hasn't seen a BC Lions game for a long time, right? And at this point, he turned to me and says, he, he, he thinks this is the turning point. Because it's it's a momentum killer, right? They're, they're, yeah, absolutely. they're driving down the field, you know. They're gonna score, and we get the ball back, and they don't score, right? And and I wanted to believe him, but but in my gut, I was thinking, let's let's hold on. We gotta score, right? And in our next drive, it's a two and out. And uh, and then so, with I guess with a uh, three plays, sixty-one yards, two and out. Yeah, it's 61 well, yards because they... Three um, plays, first down, second down, punt. That's three plays. Yeah, it's 61 yards because oh, yeah, uh, Winnipeg yeah. took a penalty on the, on the Oh, punt yeah, return. and then, so actually it worked out because they're on the 20, beast 27 and they, yeah. they scrimmage on the 22, which, yeah. I mean, I, I would have taken that, but, of yeah. course. Yeah, it, it, it would have well, been closer I mean, at, without at the, the penalty. the time of the game, you take it, right? But in hindsight, it would have been nice to have points, but, I mean, it still stopped them from scoring. Yeah. But like Roland and you both say, Winnipeg's like, crap. Okay, let's get it back. And their defense for is a two and out. I mean, how many two and outs did they really have? They had one. Yeah. One at the near the at the end of the first half. Are you talking Winnipeg? Yeah. yeah. And they pretty much been driving the field. Yeah. Like almost every time. Yeah. yeah. Our two and outs came at the most inopportune yeah. times. Well, I, again, I, I go to the balanced offense, right? They've got a strong running game. We don't. And, um, and I think that that shows in the two and outs. Mm -hmm. So, so after our, we were lucky in that two and out because of their penalty, uh, they started back. And then on the next drive, they drive down eight, eight plays. And then I, again, it's a sack fumble and we run it back 51 yards. So, so that drive, they only actually advanced 10 yards. They started on the Win Winnipeg 22. They ended up on the 32 after our, our, fumble recovery return they were close to the red zone yeah BC they were. red zone yeah they were they were close to the red zone uh, almost as close as the previous play so i think these these two plays were were kind of you know almost oh, at the very same identical spot. yeah so so at this point i was thinking oh, this is our second chance we 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 didn't capitalize here uh, our, our defense gave the ball back again, and now we even better field position. They just didn't get the touchdown, but what, hey, what do you expect, right? That's not their job. Uh, and then we score, but it's just a field goal. We didn't get any, we didn't, you got snuffed and yeah. then an incomplete pass. So. Yeah, we, we didn't gain any yards. We, we, mm -hmm. we ended up where the, the defense uh, you know, got the ball for us, right? So next play, uh, Winnipeg marches down, nine plays, 70 yards, and gets a touchdown. Another field drive. Yeah. So you can see their offense is really clicking here. Um, and it was, if I'm not mistaken, that's quarter four now, right? Oh, yes, yeah, we're yes. deep in quarter yeah, four. It yeah. was the same. We'll talk about that when we go over. But it was the, I just noticed it was the same play that was beating us all the way down the field. Yeah. It was painful to watch. Yeah. So, so we get the ball back, and we didn't manage to get a first down. We, we go three plays and we couldn't get the first down. Uh, we'll, we'll look at this 9. one. 9.9 yards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we'll, 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 look at, we'll look at the place here, but, but high level, this was, this was a must-have, must-have, yeah. and we could not do it. Mm. You know, Would at, you say turning point, critical point? Needed well, to have, had to have it. You're up by three, you're in midfield with, what, less than two minutes left in the game. you got, you got to make that third in inches. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're giving them an opportunity to win the game. Field, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they could just outwin the game. They were BC defense stiffened up and then held them to a field goal to tie it. But yeah. But anyways, yeah. 
that's that's you got to make that yeah exactly you have to make that if so, you don't make that you don't deserve to win yeah right, that's right. Uh, yes yeah because that that is an emotional kill that that, that t- like i mean you want to talk as uh what was it stats you want to talk x's and o's you want to talk, no no that is pure emotional x factor is just gone you've just exactly yeah. every the defense yeah i know they say they got each other's back and they're a family they're family but i guarantee to you uh, every, to a man on that defensive unit it's like oh it there is that letdown and yeah. then well we, we show sure. what that letdown led to right for sure i mean i, I was telling uh, uh arthur right like what else can the defense has given us so many chances what else can you expect from them right well, you got to score, right? Uh, so. They're on. They're running on fumes, and they're still getting, still like, um, getting takeaways, yeah. right? And and yeah, it's it was it was tough to watch. Yeah. So we turn it over on downs at the Winnipeg 52. Uh, again, our our, you know, our defense was called to 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 task. You know, they they limit them to a field goal, which in itself I think is is a victory, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, As they're on that BC twenty. Yeah. Um, and then Ugh. last play of the game. <laughs> sixty-five yards, Go baby. Sixty-five yards, but it's five yards too. Sh- five yards short. We'll, we'll look at that play when we get there. So it goes it, into. It helped, it helped VA's stats, and so it helped Ryan's <laughs> stats too. Well, so, you know, they say what stats are for. Stats are for losers. <laughs> so we go into overtime. Uh, overtime. Winnipeg, four, four plays, uh, gets a touchdown, gets a two-point convert. Penalty assisted touchdown, I might add. Okay. I'm uh, not saying it was definitely a penalty, but it was a penalty assist. Yeah. And then it comes to our turn. We move back eight yards, get sacked, and then Sack. that's it. Yeah, Winnipeg's defense rose to was that. It, was, it a running, on was it a running play for sp- the sack? First down? No, we never. Was it was a sack first down? It was just a sack. Uh, sack and then yeah, pass, pass, fail, pass. Yeah, field. sack, pass, pass, and that's it. Yeah. Well, I think we want second and eighteen again. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. So, yeah. So that's that's kind of the ebb and flow, the ups and downs of the game. Uh, you guys ready to look at some plays? Okay. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I would say if, if I could borrow your, your term, the ebb and flow as we go into those plays, I think that's the thing. Winnipeg was able to, no matter what adversity happened to them, was a turnover, strip sack, sack, whatever, if we even got sacks, they were able to, to stem that tie. They were able to get the flow back in their, their favor. We just couldn't do that. We just could not turn that tied even with the home crowd with a fair amount of Winnipeg Blue Bomber fans sprinkled in there because I know I had the pleasure of having a couple right behind me um you know we just couldn't just couldn't get that momentum back when we needed it that yeah. emotional momentum yeah well I mean I mean Roland looked at these stats the the typical stats we look at is like net offense and Winnipeg had 493 we had 356, but that's including the 65, the 65 at the end. Yeah. At the end, without that 65, we're under 300 yards net offense, and, most, and Winnipeg is pushing almost 500. Yeah. And, and most so that of, tells you. Go ahead. I said most of our yards was in the first half too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had three takeaways, and they had well one because of that third down and inches. Yeah, we down won the goal. turnover battle. We won the turnover, so winning the turnover battle brings your the net offense, it, it brings it closer, right? Because obviously we have a massive gap. But with those turnovers, it helped us. So that's why I'm thinking we almost stole a game yeah. that we should have won yes. going away. Well, we should have won like with, with a one or two score. Let's say but... we would have won it decisive. No penalty is it, it was it would have been a win. A solid if win. they if the and and we could just move the ball a little bit and get a touchdown yeah. in the second half yeah. we'd be we be up like 10 points like you know like we win by 10 points but anyways yeah yeah okay let's let's uh t- take a look at some plays and get your thoughts on this so this is the the first uh, bc offensive drive um Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you these uh, these videos in quick succession. This is the first drive, and here 
um, this a pass to rhymes. So about eight or nine yards to rhymes. Um, then soon after that, this is to Kotoi. And then after that, we have one to Hatcher. I want to show you because in the first drive, we, we hit all five of our receivers. And I think that's, uh, that's amazing. That's an amazing start, right? This one is Hollins. And this one is to, to Lucky. So all five receivers. I mean, yeah, that play's got to go. Yeah, but, but still, all five yeah. receivers. Uh, they on, the ball. on the first drive. So, um, like like I said last week, I think first drives are, are scripted, right? But the fact that you know we were able to to execute on the script and and get the, the ball to all five receivers, I was feeling pretty positive, right? Like if we can spread the ball out, that's gonna keep the Winnipeg you know, um, DBs guessing. So, um, the, yeah. So first drive. Uh, any th thoughts on on that? Looks like playing out uh, Winnipeg playing a lot of zone defense from what I can see. Okay. And uh, and Adams just able to find his first read. It seemed like or first or second read, and you know those guys sit in a seam except well except for this lucky yeah um, reception. Yeah. Um, they're sitting in a seam and he just hits it, and it's like pretty easy if you want to play a zone defense on Ryan Adams if he has time to throw. Yeah. Reserving my thoughts until later. All right. Okay. So that was um, that was our first. Uh, we we end up with a field goal. Uh, Winnipeg gets the ball back, and then they end up with this uh, missed field goal. Yeah, that was. You know, he would normally make that. And then Williams runs out. That doesn't get too far. I noticed here. Uh, you know, at first in the game, I thought. Uh, I thought he should have gone um, I think the other it, way. This way, yeah. He can beat Jefferson. Yeah, but 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 if you if you look, the the, the play was to go left because all the blockers were there. So but look at, but every inside every blocker where they are, the bombers are all inside that wall. Yeah, but yeah, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, if, if you're Williams, the the play is the play is to go left because that's where the blocks are going to be set. I wonder if the, the play is to go up the middle. Because, because it, yeah, because then all the BC lines are like behind the bombers, yeah, so it's like back. he's it's like he's trying to find a a cutback lane, and there isn't one, and there isn't one because that one that guy one came over and took it away. So yeah. I think maybe go, he's supposed to cut back. Go back to where he he starts with that ball, and I'm going to go back to intelligent running. Like right away, he's going there. If, like you said, if that, but he should see right away, like recognize that th there's no wall forming there. There isn't. And all he's got to do is beat that one defensive end who's, yeah, Willie Jefferson's long, but he's not that fast. And if he runs out to that side, I, I, again, hindsight being what it is, but he should recognize that wall was not forming. And yeah. up the middle, I don't know if he would have made it anywhere, yeah. but he's okay. got to be smarter than that. Well, he's on yeah. the other side of that hash. It's, I mean, there's not much space there. Yeah. And then Jefferson's even more on that side of that hash. Yeah. So if he runs straight at Jefferson and uses a juke, he can beat Jefferson. Yeah. If he runs smart, if he but, stutter steps, if you roll but, it and he stutter yeah, steps, like he Jefferson's does up there, got he's got big wings, Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> so, he big if wingspan. You run, if you yeah. run straight at him and makes him com commit, he's got a big wingspan. He's a tall guy. He's not going to be able to cut back. If, if I will bet dollars to donuts, Williams can outcut Jefferson, wingspan or not. You just got to know where to cut take that wingspan into consideration. But where he went, let it. can you let it go, Ro? Where he goes, and then he sits there and stutter steps on the spot? Yeah. Because he's trying to wait for blocks to develop? Now he's done, because there's nothing there. He's but I gotta be yeah. smarter. I, I, Greg, to be fair, I don't think this is on him. I think this is what the play is. This is the play that was called, right? Then ignore the coach. Oh, okay. <laughs> But and, and to be go. to be fair Ignore for the Williams, coach and make it right. Make your decision and make your decision right. To, to be fair to Williams, I think this probably was his worst return in the evening. All the other returns were much better. Yeah. But there so. was nothing there for him. It was all Winnipeg there, and it's yeah. all linemen. 
every you know oh you know kick returns cannot run line well not when the linemen are there first well then, I don't know then why. he can't then he if, if that's what you're saying then he doesn't know where he can go then on the other side he was fine mm, i'm just okay. saying he's like i don't know what the, whenever the lines are running back a missed return a missed field goal or whatever i don't know the opposition's linemen seem to be down there before ours but yet any other game the returner can outrun the lineman because they're not there yet. I don't know what, we just let the lineman come down. It just seems that way. Maybe it's emotionally clouding me, but I don't know. It just seems opposition linemen are always there before our returner gets to the point of attack. Great. It, For, it's ad nauseum. Great conveniently forgets the Ottawa game. <laughs> All good, let's move ahead. One, okay. one time is not going to erase everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we'll because on. he went to the other side where the wall wasn't. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. So, all right. So, so now we have got the ball back, um, and we we actually march it down. Uh, I want to show you this play because we we've had uh, all of our five starting receivers catch the ball. Now we've got our sixth receiver. McKinnis gets the ball here too, and this one's beautiful because uh, Adams is scrambling, and he manages to to evade quite a few people. That's and, that's I see a Katoy lined it up in the backfield and went out. So we play. talked about that. Yeah. 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 And then in this play, Katoy lined up in the back, kind of like he was in the kind of in the backfield. Yeah. They they, I, then, um, they put him there for, for a lot of the plays. He lines up near the back. Yeah. Like in, in one, yeah. Yeah. Because there's a six receiver set too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my Zell is not in. So mm -hmm. Katoy is kind of taking on that backfield role. I shall refrain from comment here until later in the broadcast. Nice rub on the end. Yeah, yeah Jeff Coates coming. Yeah. Oh, man. So, a uh, question to you guys. Do you think we should do more of these six receiver sets, or, or is it too risky? <laughs> Might as well. I mean, you're not running the ball. Because, <laughs> like, when you guys said no Mizell, it doesn't make a difference whether it's a Mizell. Like, having no Mizell there is about the same as having a Mizell there with the running game. And I'm going to say, Sorry. again, not intelligent Sorry, running. Not his best not his best decision-making on Friday night. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had six carries. And maybe he's he not looking. Maybe his he's the escape route or, the, you know, getting bailing out vernon adams but maybe he's not looking at the pass but i mean we i can get into this i can talk all day about the disparity of the running back position between yeah. winnipeg and dc and that's oh. just yeah. a massive two hole. To, to fill that disparity I mean, it's, 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 two, yeah. two it's a massive hole and until the lions can somehow narrow that gap it's that is just almost too hard almost too hard to overcome yeah. too much to overcome it's, it's but they almost day. did it they almost did it yeah. on friday it's night and day but uh yeah almost so, in horseshoes and hand grenades not in football all right so then let's let's jump to the uh, to the end of this drive um so this is a pass to to hatcher in the end zone and a pass interference was called on 17 uh, winnipeg 17. Oh, did he grab his arm? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was underneath, uh, Hatcher's arm was underneath the armpit, left armpit of 17. Did it get there, though? But, but was it was it held? I don't know. Well, 17's arm goes above him. Yeah, he can easily, yeah, he can hold the Hatcher's. If Hatcher's arm's underneath, he he's, can be considered preventing his arm from doing something. From going up. Yeah. It's Is it actually, oh, it's actually on purpose. I'm just, you know. We got tangled up. But then what was that stupid call we had going an accidental pass interference and it went against us one game? Yeah. And the yeah. Helmet, whatever that call is. So anyway, this this actually was challenged. Right? I think it was mm -hmm. this yeah, was challenged. And they lost the challenge. And they lost it, yeah. So so anyway, so that leads to um, leads to Dominic Davis. Yeah, Dominic Davis. So and he punches it in uh, this time here. So we get a touchdown. Almost didn't though. Now that I can oh. see it up close. Yeah, I mean it wasn't wasn't too he's bad. Get he got, he's got space on the right side. Okay, so so that was that drive, and then um, Winnipeg gets the ball back. They start on their 38-yard line, and here the, these are just uh, I'll do these uh, quick. These are you know pretty pretty. 
big place. So that one Crazy. was yeah, 18 yard to Lawler. Um, this one is a 13 yarder to Sean. Actually, I think it's this one. Let me just back up here quickly here. Oh no. Yeah, so 13 yarder to Sean. Um, and then this one was a bad snap. Uh, and then Kolaris uh, kind of bobbles the ball, falls on it, and then uh, uh, Tuhema gets, uh, gets a sack on him. So this this kind of you know, slows the drive down and then they have to settle for a field goal. Okay. So field goal and then we start on our 40 yard line. Um, I don't remember guys, after a scoring play, like a touchdown or a field goal, um, who, who has the option of uh, going for a kickoff or starting on the 40 yard line? Is it the receiving team? Or is it the uh, the one who just scored? Who who chooses? I don't know. We'd have fans out there. Can anybody out there in Leo not Land sure. answer that? I'm not sure. I, I've I, I've been I've heard that on a touchdown, then kickoff is mandatory. Oh, it is. From what I've heard, but I, again, I've not I've not confirmed that. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, on a field goal, you have the option, right? Okay. But I mean, not on a touchdown. Okay, so on a field goal you have the option. So, but who who gets to choose? Is I'm, it the receiving yeah. team or yeah. the kicking team? I'm feeling. I'm. I'm th I was. I've always thought it was the receiving team, but but I'm um, yeah. not 100 percent sure. So, so, anyway, that's that's what we do. We we decide to um, to not uh, return the ball. We're going to start on our on our 40 yard line, and so this is the play. So this is 70 yards to Katoy. This is beautiful. That, that seems to be his trademark now. This is the second time this year that we saw when he's giving a peace sign <laughs> to mocking the, uh, the defender as he's running into the end zone. This oh, is I thought he was just trying to do a stiff arm and got his fingers mixed uh, up. <laughs> he did do a stiff arm earlier, I think. But... Uh, hmm, maybe Katoy is faster than Ryan's. But he, I guess he hit him in stride. Yeah. Yeah. That's his third touch touchdown of the year. So I was, I was happy for him. Yeah, very happy. With all the blocking he does and everything else, I'm happy for him. Yeah. So yeah, since um, since he doesn't get too many touchdowns, I'm going to show a replay here too. Yeah. He had to slow down Ooh, there too. What a stiff arm there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first stiff arm and then a peace sign. So that's beautiful. So I, I was very happy, but again, uh, as I said earlier, de defense had no rest. This was like <laughs> a bang, bang, and then they're back on the field. And so the next, uh, the next Winnipeg drive, um, uh, we, we we see this. So oh, hold on, this that's another replay. Let me do this. Okay. Oh, actually, actually, I'm going to show you the kickoff here. So we do the kickoff, and it it hits the white line. Um, the, I guess it's a new rule, right? Uh, that it starts on the 50 yard line if your kickoff kickoff goes out of bounds. Yeah, to generate more offense, it used to be on the 40, but it where it's allowed to go out of bounds inside or on kickoff, it is not allowed to go out of bounds. Correct? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, kickoff, and a kickoff. None. Yeah, punt. It's got to be inside this. It's inside, inside the 20. 15 or 20? Yeah. 15? 15. I'm not sure. Is it 15 or 20 for punts? Not sure. Yeah, but yeah, kickoff. So that that was a painful penalty because now they're starting on their on on their 50. Um. So, okay, let's, so they, they drive it down and then this is the play. Uh, so, yeah. So this, this drive was a, a quick response. That was uh, three, three plays, three plays, 93 yards. Well, 93 if we, count from where no it's uh from, 55 yeah. 60 yards right 
Yeah. Because 55 plus it's 5. Not 93. Because 93 is yeah. where the ball went out. Uh, mm, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, okay, so. That was just too easy. They, they made they, they, they made three throws. It's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's too easy. Too easy. Uh, you know, two things, right? They, they got good field position, and then our, mm -hmm. our defense had no rest. So, so they got a touchdown here. Okay. And then after that, we do, uh, we do a two and out. Uh, so that's painful. And then Winnipeg gets the ball back in their 19. Uh, they drive it down all the way to the BC 10. Um, and then... This is... Oh, sorry, no, not, not the BC 10, sorry. This is... This is still on that, this is still on that drive, I think. Okay, we just... Uh, just Five play. minutes to go in the first half, so... Logé. That's the oh, interception. That's, that's the green interception. Oh, yeah. it's a green, yeah. It's, green. it's a green interception. So, this one, I don't think he saw green, because green was just was there the whole time, right? So I, yeah, he's just a cover one safety, and I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, just check the CFL rules here. Um, it is the, the receiving team can either can choose scrimmage or receive a kick but only after a field goal after a touchdown it must be kicked off but it is the receiving team that has the choice yeah so why did bc choose to receive a kickoff with 15 14 whatever 16 seconds left in the game i guess they thought myself uh, not myself uh, williams could uh give them a better field position. maybe another ottawa another ottawa return I mean, I'd rather just be at the 40 with this, you know, you have a timeout. You can run like two, three plays. Because that clock like stops plays. the minute he receives that ball, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so you're they running. Lost, yeah, they lost a few seconds. Oh. Sorry, I think we lost uh, uh, Arthur. Oh. It's okay, he'll, he'll call back in. Um, but yeah. Uh, they lost some valuable seconds there. They did, yeah. So is that a coaching decision? Uh, yeah, it's a coaching call, right? Yeah, the coach yep. calls. So as well, we're waiting for for Arthur. We can we can go on to the next uh, the next play here. So yeah, that's that's another takeaway by the defense. I, I was enthused by that. I know that with this takeaway, I thought, okay, you know, let's let's score, right? So uh, let's take a look at our next drive here. So so we start off with. Uh, with this, so uh, I might sell run. This was it's our best run of the night. I yeah, think. exactly. I, I put it there because it's it's our be the best run. Yeah. <laughs> Dare we say only run? <clears throat> no, actually, it's his best run because he did run a few more times. Yeah. Well, no, actually, his his longest run. I mean, he he ran uh, more more plays, but this was the longest one, eight yards. Can you back that up a little bit, Roland, just one more time? Because I've got a, I've got a point I want to make with Mizell's running. When I, I had said earlier in the broadcast that he was not running smart this game. Okay. This was decisive. He ran north-south. Yeah. And again, no cuts, no stutter-stepping on the spot. He just ran. And that's going to be my bone of contention later on when we show some other ones. But yeah. carry on, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, we got Arthur back. Hey, Welcome Arthur. back, Arthur. And hold this. Hold this. Yeah, no worries. We're just uh, looking at the, the best run, myself's best run of the evening, eight yards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, so same, same drive. Uh, a bit later on, uh, Adams gets sacked here. So... You know, Adams is getting sacked a lot nowadays. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about the old line. But I think, I think, I, I think he's got a responsibility as well. You know, uh, like he needs to, he needs to have that internal clock to know when, when he needs to bail and then be decisive and just bail, right? Uh, bail right now. So, so, you know, here we, we start off with a three, three man rush 
and then a delayed rush, uh, three more come up. Or but two, look at two. how much those outer two, the, the, the two outside guys on the three man rush, look at how much disruption they cause. They're both being double teamed and they're collapsing the pocket. Yeah. So that when the late guys get there, I mean, those two almost, actually, those two got the sack on their own. Yeah. Yeah, with old Big Hill coming in there, yeah. Yeah. Now, does uh, so, Mizell, and then Mizell, he, I mean, is that his responsibility to take that late guy, or should he have peeled out and been a safety valve? Because well, that flat would have been was, open. He was double teaming, double teaming this guy. Yeah, so is he, was, he supposed to, though? Or should he have gone out to the flat, and or should, you know, or done... Again, is that on V8? Well, there's a double team there. I Maybe I can beat Big Well, I didn't think it matters because then Big Hill's coming in. So even if Mizell peeled off, Big Hill's right there. Yeah. So it, it kind of wouldn't have mattered. Well, then maybe Adam should have rolled to his right and got around Mizell. Exactly. I think he should have rolled right away. Exactly. Like, at, at this like point, now. Either you throw it away or you're, you're rolling. Yeah. So yeah, that's, it looks like he's waiting for something to develop, and it ain't yeah. developing. And, and that's, that's my point. We've been, uh, definitely the O-line needs to improve. But but I think I think uh, you know for the sacks uh, VA needs to need to you know need, needs to bail as well right he needs to know when he he, he can't hold on to the ball too long uh, yeah so, so some I of these sacks yeah is, is not just on the online right so I mean the lines had seven and pass protection if I count correctly pack it up yeah I, I believe you are correct. So, I mean, like, how much more? I mean, six are coming, and seven in pass protection. And you should be able to pick took up out four. Two you should be able to pick up the, the blitz a bit better than this. Yeah. And give him a little bit more time. Yeah. I mean, I can understand, you know, you got five back in protection and six are coming, and you're outnumbered, but you're outnumbering them. You should have a little bit more time than this. Yeah. And I, I mentioned this to you guys uh, on on Sunday. I I wonder if um, so when when Adam sees a blitz, uh, he he needs to know that he has he doesn't have much time. So so rather than going to his first and second read, which m most likely will be cl will be covered. Yep. I, I wonder if he should just jump directly to read number three, three four five. You know, go go to you know Holland's Couture or or, or Lucky. Because, because if if Rhymes and Hatcher are are covered, which you know, which I'm if I'm the defense, probably I would key in on those guys, right? But with the with, with with the blitz coming and he doesn't have much time, you know, if he's still going through his progression, number one is close, number two is close, number three is close. At that point, he sacked. He sacked, right? By the time he gets to three, he sacked. Yeah, but 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 if he if he changes and goes jumps directly to number three, just assume if they're gonna be blitzing, most likely number one and two are covered. I'm just gonna. Or maybe even go reverse, go to number five, then number four. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm just, uh, you know, trying to see what, what we could do to, to to improve, right? To Let me throw this one at you, too. Did, if it's a blitz, somebody in this play is designated the hot receiver and they know who they are. Did they not find an open spot? Is well, I it, think it, I think is it Katoy? Well, is that Looks Katoy? like Grimes yeah. right. might be cutting through the middle. Right, oh, and is Adam's guy? trying to hit him and then realizes I mean, he's covered? who knows who the hot I, it's Or hard can to you tell not who the see him is. because that, that pocket's closing so quick? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not, it's hard to see. I don't know who the hot is, so... Yeah. I mean, based on who uh, uh, where Adams is looking, uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's either this guy or this guy, right? That he's looking at. Based on, on where he's his, his looking right now. Right. He's kind of he's kind of looking this way, right? So I'm guessing either here or here. I mean, that's his first read. But yeah, it's tough because when you take a sack, uh, you know, you put yourself in such a big hole, right? See, Rhymes isn't even looking. He's still looking, running forward. But that gentleman's dropping back right into where Rhymes is going, I think. But again, it's yeah. going to run off, oh, yeah. so I can't see. Yeah, yeah, it's obvious, right? Yeah. And then I don't know where Lucky breaks his pattern off because it's off screen already too. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's hard to see without the full field. View. Coverage sack, baby. It's hard to see, see right? We yeah. don't we don't have anywhere near the enough information to make that call. Yeah. But I do like Roland's point. I mean, you know one and two's coverage, so already you should in your head go three, four, and five, whether you're getting a blitz or not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to know who is one and two and four yeah. and five and who's the but hot. They do. And, 
Yeah, but I'm just saying they do. If, if he knows, then just never mind one and two in, in, in a situation because they're covered. But, no, hey. but I don't, I, like I said, I don't know who one and two are in this, and I don't know if they're covered. But there's so much we don't know, right? Because it's going off screen. So it's, 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 yeah, I, uh, I think, like, I think theoretically, yeah, correct. You should just maybe you should look at something else. But yeah. it, maybe, like, if Rhymes has a mismatch, and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, most likely man coverage, the way it's looking right now, because they have so many bombers near London scrimmage. Yeah. So it's probably man coverage. Yeah. You would probably give it to your guy that you have the mismatch with. Yeah. So it would probably be right. But the question is, why isn't why, why didn't he throw it? He held on to it because he didn't think that it was looks a good like throw. he thought Hollands can get it, and he could. He didn't. Right now, at this point, it looks like things are contained. Like the pass rush is contained at this point. Yeah. Like he doesn't feel imminent danger, right? Yeah, but now at this point, he sees two other guys that just crossed the line of scrimmage. Well, I mean, I don't know. He might be looking downfield. I mean, it's hard to know where his eyes are, yeah. but he can probably feel the pressure. Yeah, but I mean, peripheral vision should be able to see blue shirts coming. I think right here, I don't think he feels he's in trouble. But in one second, less than a second later, he's in trouble. Yeah. Like, I think he tried to, did he step up? No. He, he did, he did step up. Yeah, he, he he's trying to deliver up. the ball. I see he's- But those two outside guys step into him right away as he's, he's stepping up. You see he's cocking, his, he's cocking, cocking, ready to go. And then a little indecision, right? He kind of like, right here, okay. Cocking, well, he's not. like, okay, come on, come on, come on, Hollands. And maybe he's looking at Hollands. Oh, and he's both ready to throw it. And then he sees. Yeah. Jeff, I think it's Jeff Coat crashing down on him. Yeah. So maybe that's that's just maybe like a half second he would have got it, but yeah. It's three seventeen here. Again, we're not really precise, right? I think they they he he um, took the ball at three twenty. So three seconds. You know, come on. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He should get a little bit more time. He should be more decisive with the ball. Three seconds. Yeah, but. I, I think yeah. Uh, earlier, earlier in the uh, in the first couple drives, you know, he was getting the ball out fast. I think he was waiting for a, a, a deep play to to develop. That's probably why he was holding on to it. Right? They were running a lot of zone. This looks like man coverage. Yeah. So anyway, so so that 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 sack put us down to second and eighteen, uh, which is really tough. Uh, but then this happens on the second 18. It goes to our running back. I was so surprised to see our running backs that far down the field. <laughs> uh, but but it's a good play. I don't know if we've done that uh, much earlier in the season. But but yeah, he 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 actually lines up. I think. Uh, I think I think he, he, lines went, he went to the slot. Yeah. He was in the backfield, and then yeah, he lines up there. So, so good. And the whiteouts did curls at, at at about the ten yards. Yeah. Yeah, the whiteouts did curls. Yeah. So, and then and then so basically a the post pattern. Yeah. yeah. And then. Yeah. So good, good play on Mizell there. Um, so, Alexander was be, was on, on the other side of Mizell because he, he was crashing down on Rhymes. Keep Alexander running, is smoke. the guy, yeah. Keep so, running, Smoke. Why did you stop and cut back in? Because he doesn't have the speed. Keep running, Smoke. Yeah. And so it got to at least the 55. It's uh, same play, different, different angle. Three man rush. Lots of time. Yeah. And that's how you beat a man coverage. Did he need to leave his feet? Mm -hmm. Made the catch at least. Yeah. So, so we were we're out of the hole. Second and eighteen, we convert. We get a first down. Uh, and how many teams can say they convert on second and eighteen other than uh, Hamilton against us? Saskatchewan too. Don't forget. No, that was first and twenty. <laughs> oh, brother. But no, second and eighteen at, against the Bombers D. That that's that's a that's a silver lining in this loss right yeah, there. That's a, that's a gutsy call. And then next play, uh, you know, after Mizell takes us to to our fifty yard line, this happens. Another set. 
And, you know, Vern uh, went down awkwardly here. Uh, but good thing he wasn't. Yeah. I mean, he may have been hurt, but he he didn't show it. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at this. So three man rush. Two thirty, he gets gets the ball. Two twenty nine, twenty eight, and yeah. then already like two and a half seconds. Yeah, this one. Jefferson's three on him. Yeah, this one's not not on him. I think the the left tackle was beat. Right. And then Mizell is in the flat, but you see the outside linebackers going to him. Yeah. If, right? if, if, I mean, if, still, if, he could take the ball. So, I mean, he could dump it all. I, yeah. I think if anything, we, we, we don't see Mizell doing a lot of this, but I think we need to do more. He needs to help out the tackles, right? Before he goes out, just chip this guy a bit and then go do his route, right? Yeah, because he's not he's not gonna get out there fast enough anyway. Yeah. He's not really looking. So if, if he, he did should be that, looking now. If if he did that He did. Now he's he was looking. Yeah, but, but it's too but late. then but Vernon hesitated because that the linebacker, the linebacker was closing. Yeah. And it would be like maybe a one or two yard gain. The like guy that like, just ra ran past the linebacker, sorry, Arthur, is he, well yeah, we can't see off cover, but would he have been open? Who? Okay, there, see, okay, back, okay, the outside guy there, the guy on the, the Winnipeg defender on the 50 takes him. Okay, let it roll. Okay. Well, and then, then this guy corner. just passing the like, is he, if he just, you know, I don't know, I can't see where he's going off screen, but it didn't look like there's any more defenders in that shallow area, but. Well, I mean, it's, it's probably cover two, so the, the corner is dropping back this polyus. There's a cover two right there, right? The, the cover two would be near the, on the hash. It would take he'll take that other receiver, but maybe that's where Vernon was looking. Yeah, we again we can't see if we, it yeah was, we can't tell. Yeah, we can't tell. Yeah. yeah, there is. See, yeah, there is. This it's a cover two, and he's moving with. Okay, lucky. there you go. Okay, he was off screen yeah. when I we didn't yeah, get yeah. it. Okay, okay. Yeah. So anyway, this. Then that's three man pressure again. Three man, sack. three man pressure. Left tackle gets beat. I think running back should have helped. Running back should have we helped. Have six in protection. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're getting sacked. Six, so, six in protection. Beat us. Yes. Yeah, but this this guy's not in protection. He just ran out. He oh, didn't no, do anything. But there's count the. Oh, count okay. The, the others. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's six. I mean, there's and six right a seventh. Yeah. Myzel's a seventh. Yeah. But okay, look at this. This guy here. Um, the guy third in from the bottom of the screen there's a double team on the bottom to winnipeg different this guy here is turning towards him is that chung or Kudun? is that couture I think, I think that's the uh is that the center oh so, no that's the right see. guard oh no it's yeah it's a oh, yeah right that's good to, yeah it is, it's the right guard okay so that's chung why i mean when, why is he coming over to triple team that guy or is that where he's supposed to go because he comes straight over but it would have been nice if he had helped Jeff helped on Jefferson behind him. Yeah, yeah, because it's already Katoy's exactly. chipping. Exactly. Look, look at what Katoy's doing yeah. here, right? I don't know. It's so. to me that's that needs to be better coached. So we got three yeah. guys on the bottom guy. Yeah. After yeah. while Katoy and then like Jefferson one on one beats his guy. Yeah. And we're yep. still double teaming the other guy who's not even a problem. Yeah. So this one that's not on Vernon. That's, yeah, that's this like two and a half that's seconds. Squarely this one's not on Vernon. Vernon. Yeah, it's on the line. Um, yeah, I, th I th still think that myself should should do a little bit of a chip. If he did that, there's six in protection, up. man. On a three-man rush, you gotta you gotta be able to give him more than you gotta give him more than three seconds. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, Kotoi well, releases too, right? So Kotoi chip uh, well, chips and then he yeah. releases. But by that time, Jefferson's right in his face. Yeah. He's not yeah. gonna but, throw. But my point is, if, if Mizell if Mizell had chipped his guy. Then, then maybe Adams would have had enough time to get the ball out. You know, maybe, maybe um, is it Broxton that got Jefferson got Jefferson got beat? Yeah, uh, Brock, he just basically stepped over Roxton. He the, steps yeah, the left around tackle. him. So they, he should do the um, the not holding kind of ch choke hold that other guys are doing yeah. on on our, yeah. our guys. Or, right? or Broxton is big enough; he can grab Jefferson here and lift him up, and then Jefferson can't do anything. Inside here is legal. Just lift them up. His pads are attached. Lift them up. Broxton's big enough. Yeah. 
Low man well, and... it's not the size of the boy. So the size of the man is the size of his fight, exactly. right? Yeah, well, Broxton didn't have any fight, but you, we're talking fundamentals here. Low man wins. Yeah, I mean, we, we all know what they're supposed to do, but the, the fact of the matter is uh, our, tackles, our, our own line is getting beat a lot of times, you know, consistently getting beat. And and so what I'm, what, what I'm, where my mind is right now is we can't change our personnel. We got to change the scheme. Right, so so if, if Mizell is not chipping, let's get him to start chipping. Help help the guys out because taking a sack, doing a second and eighteen, you're gonna give the ball up, right? So so that's 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 kind of where my head is, right? What's what's frustrating is it's solely inconsistent, right? Like the play before, they were able to to get. I mean, it was a three man rush, and they were able to give. Vernon, lots of time he was able to find Mizell for a 30 yard pass. And then the next play, yeah. you know, I know Winnipeg is like amped up, like, hey, we gotta, we gotta answer that. We gotta answer that. You know, we gave them second and long yeah. and they converted on us. So they got, they got upset, right? Yeah. And then they, they, the the three man, yeah, I mean, they beat, three man beat six guys. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't, I, I don't like those numbers, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I do the math. Six three. That's two per guy. We should be able to stop them. Yet they put their six offensive linemen down. We send four or five, and we can't even get a sniff. Exactly. So. And but how many guys are in the back? Uh, how many guys are you know in the secondary looking for uh, interception? Which is what I'm sure O'Shea is trying to force, right? Yeah. Because then it's two minutes, two minutes and change left in the first half. He's trying to force an interception. So at least Vernon didn't throw into coverage. Because he won, he he hesitated, and then he just took the sack. Yeah. So I think maybe after all those big interception games, they're just saying, "Oh, I'll just take the sack." Then. Yeah. Maybe but, that's why they're taking they're getting more sacks. Yeah, but gotta throw oh, the They're ball letting away. more sacks being um, allowed. But I think I think I'd still have I'd still rather throw the ball away than take a sack. Right? At least your second yeah. and ten is supposed to second and eighteen. He could throw right out of bounds in at midfield, yeah. and it wouldn't be grounding. Throw it over Mizell's head at the fifty; it's not grounding. But anyway, talk about, um, since you mentioned inconsistency, so we get sacked here, uh, and then the very next play, oh, there's a replay, let's take a look at the next play. Now it's second and 18. They and rush four. four. They pick it up. And this, like, look at this, pat, look at this catch. catch. Yeah, look at this catch by Hollins. <laughs> That's effort. Yeah, it is effort. But again, in the same series, we get sacked, we get out of second 18, we get sacked, and then we get out of second 18 again. So that's two in a row, two in a row on, on second and long, where normally what we've done is on the second and long, we just go for 10 yards, half the distance. And, and, then, and then punt. Yeah. But, but I like this drive because I thought it was, it was aggressive. This, these are aggressive plays, second and long, and you're, you're getting the first down. That's, that's, that's your play. So, We're getting five yards beyond the first down. Yeah, so so I, I I like that, and this gave me a good feeling that hey, you know our our, our calls are are aggressive. Maybe we might you know might, might be able to win this game. Yeah, that was my feeling at this point. Oh, look how pumped the bench is. That's yeah. a massive play by Hollins. Yeah, look at that. it's such a beautiful play. We have a replay here too. But look at that! They handled four. It was a bad. It was a wobbly ball too, it wasn't was, it? Not? Yeah. And he and he had a stumble too. So he had a jump at the end just to get it yeah. out of the break. I think. Yeah, I thought I saw that when we were at the game. I thought, oh my gosh, he tripped, but he still was able to recover and make the dive for that yeah. ball. I don't know if certain touched... receivers in lines colors would not have given that effort. Just yeah. saying, Arthur. You know. You think the ball touched the ground here? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. His gloves under it. So. Greg, I'll do this for you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who that is, right? You know what that pose means? Die for it? Heck no. That's what that pose is. <laughs> but, Come on. Well, He's how, the goat. How's our pass protection here? We've got... It seemed fine. Like four. But, I mean, it was, it was a little struggling. Well, look, look at, look at look the how many between guys our left tackle and our left guard, eh? Look at that well, gap. Like, it's because... Um, is it Jefferson is like yeah, way he off lined up so far, edge. Yeah. So we got all right. So run it, and I think it's it's a little shaky. Five down, it's a little line. shaky. But two right? receivers come in. Hatcher and Katoy come in. Oh, and so Katoy does a rub, 
And there's yep. six and that back delayed there. him long enough for, for Perkins to pick him up. And, yeah. And Hatcher Hatcher does his thing too. He 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 pushes he pushes number five into the left. Into tackle. Broxton. Yeah. And yeah. then he goes runs his route. So basically he had two receivers kind of slowed slowing down a four man pass rush. Yeah. You have six in protection. So you have eight guys distracted by four. Yeah. You know, Mike, I mean, these, I mean, those two receivers are late getting out into their routes. Yes, yeah. they can be the hot receiver, but, you know, I just don't like that math. But, you know, Winnipeg had, had six linemen for quite a few plays in this game, too. Mm -hmm. So... In, in pass protection, you mean? Uh, well, sometimes, sometimes they did it in run too. So they yeah, they line yeah, up yeah. six, they had six and, uh, quite a bit, six, yes. and then they, they would run, and then uh, other place they had six, and then they would do a pass. So it wasn't predictable, right? Um, but they they did that after our first game where we had six sacks, right? Because every uh, team started putting in six linemen yeah. against our smaller so, defensive line. You know, line. just to to kind of you know respond to to Arthur I know you don't like it but but it's better to 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 have one less guy you know a, as a target but at least get the ball out as opposed to taking a sack I think that's that's where my mind is well, right? yeah I mean so, anything's better than taking a well apart from interception yeah anything's better than taking yeah. a sack oh yeah so because so, like you just like there's just not anyone open right <laughs> like yeah. this is like yeah there's no one no one really open that's the only problem. I just, I, I just want the O line to be able to protect a four man rush. Yeah, and or a I, three man for rush. Sure. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, that's, that, that's, that's a given. Yeah, I mean, that's the job, know, right? In, I mean, yeah. If there's six in protection, I don't want two rubs. You know, like either you do five man protection with two rubs. You know, but you need six and two rubs. I think that's a little. I mean, it shouldn't have to come to that. This is what yeah. I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Uh, you're right. It 100%. shouldn't have. I mean, I prefer them not to get us give up a sack for sure, hundred percent. But six in protection with two rubs. Yeah. I don't know. So. And this was. Uh, uh, this guy's well covered. Yeah. This is a good play by that's the receiver. Play, yeah. Yeah. So kudos to to Hollins there. That was uh, an excellent play. And then uh, continuing on with uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Ne very next play, we get sacked again. The third sack on this series. Take him out of field goal range. Yeah. I was not happy with this one. Yeah. But how many guys did they bring? I know Eight? this. Yeah, yeah. There's there's no way you can stop that many people. So so this this is on Vern. He needs to yeah, know. Yeah, lucky's right there. He needs to know that there's n there's no way that O line can stop First all and these ten people. Too. And he yeah. knows he's in field goal range, like yeah. barely in field goal range. Yeah, you got to get rid of this get ball. Get rid of it. Yeah, like 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 um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Greg said, Lucky's right here, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so either get it to Lucky or or throw the ball away. He can't take a like, sack. Whoa, whoa! Wait. How many guys? One, two, three, four. Five. Yeah. Eight guys? Yes, yeah, eight guys. So there's only yeah, so it's totally man on man in in the uh, in the in the backfield there. Yeah. yeah. Eight guys. And then Lucky is just cutting to the middle. I mean that guy is underneath the Boza sign, and he Lucky should be wide, yeah. Yeah, wide open, open. Yeah. wide open. Yeah. And he's looking. He's looking left. He is looking. See, uh, th this is why I thought right. Uh, instead of going to your first and second read, you see you see eight guys come in, go to your third, fourth, fifth read right away. Yeah, he, I mean, Lucky would be his. Yeah, that's that's his. Lucky's his hot, and that's yeah. on Vernon. Yeah, that's on so, Vernon. So, so you know, that's the third sack. We got we got two second and longs on this drive that we were able to get out of, but uh, unfortunately, this next second and long was not to be. We, we couldn't. See, is, Ver was, is Vernon waiting for the big bomb to develop, and that's why he's just hanging in there, hanging in there, hanging in there? But not with eight guys like, coming at you. Is that that tunnel vision that I've complained about? Not not with eight guys coming at you. There's no way you you, you have time to yeah, get rid of it. Nobody, but that's what I'm saying. He's standing there. It's not like he's running around panicking. He's standing there. It looks like he's waiting. Maybe he's thinking that they can hold him for another half second. 
eight guys. Yeah, that's right. When there's a curtain, a, a wall of white yeah. coming. In. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, he also he's been taking a lot of hits by then, right? So maybe he's not a hundred percent there. If you know what I mean, Greg. Like you know, maybe no he's just comment. taking a yeah. taking a few knocks, right? Yeah. Sometimes you get taking a few knocks is a lot of adrenaline and flowing in you, and you just want to like you want to hit them deep. I don't know. Yeah. Like I don't. That'd be smart, but yeah, so, okay, all right. So, yeah. Anyway, we couldn't we couldn't convert on a second and long. This, I think One, it's second two, and three, four, five, six, seven. So, so we end up having to uh, to to punt this. So th second and nineteen was incomplete. Third and nineteen, we punt the ball away. Oh, almost blocked it. Too. Yeah, but look at this. What a yeah, special Grant. teams tackle. Boom! Right there. That's a nice tackle, <laughs> right too. Right there. So, effectively, no return, right? Well, they went for the block. Yeah. Upon looking to replay, they went for the block. That's so, true. It would, the return should have been, would have been very minor. I'm just happy the way he was brought That's down. It was, it was kind of aggressively. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> so. It wasn't just a little tap on the foot to trip him up. No, that was, that was some authority bringing him down. Liked it. So, and then uh, Winnipeg gets the ball back. Um, so this was a second and five, and we were able to hang on to Take Oliveira. Take the legs. Here. So that Oliveira was killing us, but, but not on this play. He couldn't kill us on this play. Uh, who was that number 48? Is it Varga, I think? Yeah, Varga, that was a good play. Yeah. He, right at the legs. See, right at the thighs. He can't move well, his legs. He ain't running. That's, well, before that's that, beautiful tackling. Before that, Varga grabbed a hold of him here. Yeah. So and I think he's, he's like, dealing with another guy. Like, other guys. So Varga's kind of have two bombers. Yeah. Him. So, so he was being blocked, and yet he extended his right arm to grab a hold of Oliveira. So Oliveira can't escape. And then did. And Edwards and, Cooper came in. Yeah. Went low. And then the rest But he used the, his arms. Did you notice that? Yeah, he used his yeah. arms. Yeah. But he didn't go at the knees. He went at the thighs. That's textbook tackling on a running back. So, so this this basically um, um, forced uh, forced the two and out. So so good good play there. Uh, and then I'm going to jump down to the I guess somewhere in the middle of uh, Q3 now, uh, third quarter. So. So that was a two and out. Uh, after the two and out, uh, we were able to kick a field goal. We had uh, enough time. Uh, last play of the first half, we kicked a field goal. And then uh, second half starts, um, Winnipeg gets a field goal and then on their first drive. And then this is our first drive in the second half. So we get sacked again. Another uh, one of those sack things. We were, yeah, we were on the 20-yard line, uh, and then we get sacked. So, Looking deep in the end zone, I guess. I mean, yeah. how many seconds did he have? One. Okay, let's see. How many are they sending? 28. Okay. On 27? Yeah, 27. Looks like... They're coming five. Bring in five. Five, six. 25 24 three seconds and it's already like just under three seconds he's already running yeah like but, like running away from the pocket because yeah. the pocket's already collapsing yeah three but, seconds but, but we gotta mm. yeah, we gotta do short you know yeah you gotta do short yeah, you gotta do short uh short quick quick passes but they have a zone on a short like the linebackers are dropping on your hot receivers. Then, then maybe have... Like, look look at, I think that, who is in the middle there? So, and Hatcher's doing a curl. Yeah, so the, the, and, these, these two guys seem to, they, they break on the, on, on, on after 10 yards, right? Yeah, everyone's breaking down, yeah. but they're... Hatcher's on the What outside. they're doing is they're doing a zone, but they the, the linebackers are, are crashing those or are, are jumping into those underneath zones. So it's the it, I think that was the that's an adjustment that Winnipeg made. Yeah. Because in the first few series, VA was just hitting those guys, and then the linebackers weren't there. But again, the linebackers don't have to worry about a, a run. Yes. On, well, and then second and ten too. Yeah. They don't have to worry about a run. 
So like Bigel's just chasing those guys into that scene. And then the yeah. other hot guy who's who's in the who's in the near hash. Yeah, Katai. Right? There's 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 guy. some guy right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's Katai. So your hot guys are covered unless you're gonna force a throw to Hatcher under duress, which might be a pick six. Yeah. So Hatcher and um, Viren's not gonna do that. Nope. So he, at that point you just throw it away. Or roll out to your right and see what you but can get, and yeah. then throw it away. Yeah, too. So it's like, second and ten. You're on the twenty. You know you're gonna kick a field goal anyway. If you, even even if you take a sack, but yeah, true. But yikes! I mean that guy just. I mean that guy just went around our tackle, Weapons. right? Yeah. He just went right around them. So I think before that everything seemed okay, and then all of a sudden, whoa! Could Vernon have rolled right? I mean, maybe he didn't think he needed no, to. No, he didn't yeah, see. Right, he didn't, he yeah. couldn't see this guy. By that around. time, yeah. Now, if he rolls, yeah, like he, maybe right. he was thinking about rolling right, but then this guy just came off clean, and he was he hit himself on the other side of the line and went around the line, so Vernon probably would not have been able to pick him up until there, and it's already too late, right? Yeah. Like if maybe Vernon rolled earlier and. He can kind of evade him with yeah. with some speed, but he's he, he's a sitting duck right he here. Needs, yeah, he needs to he needs to detect detect that this guy is free at this point. If he detects it here and makes a decision, he he might be able to. But yeah. But if if he if he took a split second longer to detect, then it, the the window closes, right? I think he's still scanning downfield. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then he goes, oh. Yeah. And by that, it's way too late, right? The guys. Yeah. yeah. So, so if if anything, you know, I think Vern needs to adjust his his he needs to adjust his internal clock. He actually doesn't have as much time as he, he needs, right? So. Getting not even three seconds. Yeah. So anyway, we this this ends up in a field goal, um, and then Winnipeg gets the ball back. They get a field goal, uh, and then you know. We get the ball back, and you know we've answered we've answered field goal uh, back and forth, but then here we um, this drive we we get a two and out, and the reason we get a two and out is because on the first drive, uh, on the first down, uh, you know we get minus one yards rush. So wow, four guys, crazy. Yeah, big kill. Yeah. Uh, combination of the the online not not making the holes and my kind of like this is just wow yeah. I don't know man hurts 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 this is this is painful Roland. it is, this yeah. is painful to watch yeah, and if you're if you don't even, you know, I, I'm hoping you get four four yards on first down, but this is like minus, you know. Well, what's tough yeah. is they stood him up and then they drive him back and then they the two of the three of them land on him. Yeah, that's just like we are putting the lay down the hurt on you. Yeah. Well, you Look know he's, he's a little banged up right now, right? I just got the injury report. He is banged up for practice, so they're giving reps to that new one they just signed. Yeah, but look so, at that. That's that's your that's got to hurt, right? Yeah, that's a lot of humanity crashing down yeah, on you for sure. And he's such a little guy too, right? So, um, yeah, taking out taking away the will to compete, yep. the yeah. will to battle. Yeah. So like so like that's what Greg you mentioned before, right? Being physical, yep. yeah. you know, making a statement. And Rowan keeps on saying intensity. Yeah. You know, Winnipeg has the intensity right here. Uh, the BC, I, I'm not seeing much intensity here. Yeah. Like, definitely on off. And I know it's always easier to show intensity on defense yeah. and physicality, yeah. right? But hey, Winnipeg's O line, they show physicality. They show after we beat them that first time in Winnipeg, you see, you watch all of their games after. Their O line were bullies after that game. No, yeah. well, they look like bullies here. Yeah. Don't so, play this again, Roland. No more. This is, this so, is painful, yeah, man. Two, two and out. Uh, Winnipeg gets the ball back. They start driving down the field. So uh, seven plays down the field. They march all the way down to our 10-yard line. Uh, it's not looking good. 
and our defense needed to step up, and, and they did. So this is what happens. On the 10-yard line. On the 10-yard line. After that two and out, bam, oh, right into oh, <laughs> Betts. I know, right into Betts. And uh, you know, hard enough that he, he loses the, the handle on the ball. Oh yeah, I'd, be, I'd lose it. And like, he, he's turning around, right? He's yeah, turning yeah. around and, and all of a sudden, like, boom! Well, because I think he had the ball up here ready to, th yeah. ready to throw yeah. or something. Well, he just turned around. He, did, he thought his blind side was free. Yeah. Well, that's Hardrick over there. He's pretty safe to think that's what would happen. Yeah, but, oh, that's but he him. just got that's, smoked that's down. Him. And then Tihama picks up the ball, <laughs> gets gets help from number 58. Who's that? Oh, Banks. man, yeah. Hardrick Banks. just was able to... Oh, man. Yeah. So, but, uh, but good. Uh, you know, there's our D-line showing that, you know, they got our offenses back, right? Our offense got a two and out. They weren't able to answer the uh, the field goal. And I think that's a three-man rush by the Lions. You got to give the Lions D-line credit on that one. I think that's okay, a three-man rush. Let's take a look. Yeah. Let's back it up. Yes, it is. Yep. Give them credit. Three-man rush, yeah. And Oliveira two spies. peels yeah. out, peels yeah. out, and then, yeah, two spies. But look at so, that's more Yeah, I think, I think Colaris wanted to send it to Oliveira, but that's a bit, yeah, it's a bit tight of coverage. And then that's why he rolled that way, thinking yeah. he could roll around, and then oh, hello. Yeah. So this is a beautiful. But let me thing. buy Oliveira some time and then crunch. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I'm glad. Well, for the CFL that Zach didn't get a concussion, but he, depending on like if he if he's a little taller or Betts is bends down a little bit more, it could have been head to head, right? Yeah. Well, In, incidental meter. head to head. Yeah. Yep. But Betts has been, he's been very clean in, in his hits, right? Well, I mean, you can't, I mean, you're coming in to hit him and then if he turns into you and then yeah. you, that's not on, that's, that's, that's not on, on Betts, right? Yeah. Nope. So. But man, this, this play was very much needed. You know, they were driving down, they seemed to have control. And then before they get into the end zone, they can't even get a field goal because they turned the ball over. So, so this is the defense doing what they're supposed to do. They take the ball. Yeah, and Betts just kind of spun him around and put him down nice versus just lay and go through him. Betts did not go through him. That was a very... Well, I, th I think he was more surprised that Zach would yeah. kind of collide with him versus... Because, yeah. you know, like he, he wouldn't have... He had time to wrap up, right? And then, he, he, of course, you don't want to wrap up and then spike him down. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he kind of spun him. So that's nice. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean, right? Our, our D-line, uh, they, they make pretty clean hits. They, they're, they're not dirty, right? They're not Saskatchewan. <laughs> hey, do you honestly so, think Winnipeg would have put... Did, did, you, did they put Vernon down nicely like that? Nope. Hell no. No, they don't. They buried him. Yeah. So so we got the ball back. Uh, uh, Maybe yeah. Betts wants to be there in the, in the, in the offseason, you know? Arthur. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, he's a free show. agent. He's Different a free show. agent. Yeah. But it's nice to see. I'm glad we got this footage because we were sitting at the far opposite end of the field. All we could see is the crowd at that end cheer first. Like, what? Oh, it's a fumble. But yeah. we're way down at the other end. It's yeah. nice to see what actually happened up close. Yeah, that's right. So we get the ball back. Uh, defense gives us a gift and we do a two and out. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, can't even move the ball. You can't even get a first down. So, Defense comes back on the field. Comes back on the field. Uh, Winnipeg drives down again. Uh, if I may say, Ro. Yeah. See, when it, the defense had our offenses back, but Winnipeg's defense also had their offenses back. Yeah. They showed that they showed it a little more. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But we got the takeaways, which is you know. Yeah. So now they, 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 they get all the way down to our 18-yard line. Uh, deja vu. Yeah. He gets sacked, and this time, <laughs> Tuhama says, "I'm not waiting for the ball to come out. I'm I'm yanking it out," <laughs> which he did. But my only, oh, yeah, keep my, running. You're my, not a ball carrier. My, Just keep going straight. My only uh, uh, criticism of Tuhama here is, why did you turn right? You see, Betts was on his right, and he sees that there's a a blue bomber coming up to him. And he slows Betts down him and takes him out, but um, but, but then he to him it turns this way. Yeah, he should have just gone maybe, straight. Maybe Bet should have maybe Bet should have taken Oliveira and let well, the guy who's who's right behind. Well, I don't know because well, I guess he was out running. Yeah, he no, was Bet's out running. Can't get to Oliveira. Well, 
Yes, he could, but I think the but, other guy is getting close to Tihama. Yeah, but look at the so. distance between Oliveira and Tihama. Yeah, for Betts to close that and get an, eff eff uh, an effective block, he was better to do what he did. Okay. Because so. that guy, the angle, if we had it, like, if the camera was a better angle, that guy mm -hmm. already beat the lion that's with him. Betts yeah, had to true. take him. Question is, why did that guy beat the lion? Anyway. Yeah, but... That's Dembski beating somebody. You mean the green? 13. No, I can't. Well, 13. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. 20. Well, that's, yeah, that's hard to say. Either green or Ragama, if it's just anything. Yeah. But yeah, to how much it gets. But then I'm kind of glad they didn't score because that gives the offense some time to make a drive. So the stiff arm or yes. stiff arm. <laughs> well, I would love to have seen a stiff arm on Brady. But then again, it's a linebacker. Right, look, he does, he does a twist here. Oh, <laughs> shit. That could have been, a, uh, that been an injury. I mean, think about that. Yeah. That was a good open field tackle by Oliveira. Wow. But if if Tehama didn't slow down, he he outweighs Oliveira like by I don't know how many pounds, right? If he doesn't slow down. Well, if he didn't, he was successful in the cutback. Well, I know those other guys were coming, so I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, but I was happy for him. I was, I was, <laughs> I was standing at this point, and it just. You know, hoping that he'll make it to the end zone. So, yeah, here he he, he just rips the ball. He out. just rips the ball out. He he doesn't wait for it. Who's, but, who's doing the sack? Is that Woody Barron? Uh, I think it is. Yeah, it is Barron. Yeah. Good. Woody gets gets one once in a while. That's great. So, good to stay on his feet there. Go go! Don't and, uh, cut in the middle. That hold on someone like. Well, you know, the yeah. hole, there's a hole in the right, it, like... But he's being pulled down, yeah, yeah but yeah, Winnipeg was right. doing that all night. Yeah. I mean, all I night. don't, like, I don't know, yeah, I yeah. mean... Maybe that's why the running game's so effective. Yeah. Don't, is, isn't that a hole? I mean, it like, is. the guy's behind him, him and he goes his down, like, on the I don't back. get it. It is. Yeah. yeah. I don't get it. Actually, the ball, the ball comes out here. The, the ball comes out right here from Calaris's, and then he was able to you know, uh, get get a hold of it again, and then to him, I yanks it out. So, anyway, that's that's a second gift, second gift to to the offense. The first one, we you know we we got a two and out, and we get a second gift here, and then we we end up getting a field goal. So in three plays, we get a field goal, and then. Uh, I, I'm, I don't have this, I, I don't want to show this, but uh, Winnipeg marches down the field, nine plays, 70 yards, gets a touchdown. Um, and then we get the ball back, and this is what happens. So Adam scrambles, tries to go oh, for a first yeah. time marker. Reaches Why did out. that guy leave? Which guy? Is that Mizell? Who is that? Yeah. With the little fling flapping behind. That's yeah, Mizell. Like, you take Big Hill. This Why guy? are you going downfield? He's, He's looking at Adams down. to see what Adams is doing. Yeah, I don't think he yeah, knows. That, again, not, not, smart, not football IQ. That's not football IQ. He doesn't, know, he doesn't know Big Hill's behind him. I don't think he knows but Big like, Hill. He's he around he for a pass. He's like... He sees Adams running. And he doesn't know Big Hill's behind him. He's looking downfield to see who am I going to block, and he doesn't know Adams is behind him. Uh, uh, Big Hill is behind him. If he takes Big Hill, Adams is going down that sideline. Yeah. Yes. But he actually, gets the first down. Even even with uh, the tackle, this is ac he reaches out, and that's actually a first down. So the the on field uh, refs miss this one. If you look at this replay here. Inbounds. He's inbounds. still inbounds. He's still inbounds, and the ball's already crossed the first yep. time. And his his uh, it's hidden, but his right foot is still in inbounds here. Um, so this was a, a bad call, bad place. Yeah, bad call. But you know, but but it was only second down. So we had we had third and one. You gotta give Big, Big Hill credit. Though. Yeah. Third and one, but, oh, Dominic yeah. Davis comes in. At this point, I was yelling, why put Davis in? Just keep Adams in here. I you wasn't need confident. This. You need this. Yeah. 
uh, yard. And and sure enough, he doesn't make it. And so. that actually was a generous spot, I think, eventually. So, so I didn't even think he. So that was that was painful. Can and I say was... it again? Can I say it? Go ahead. Um, if you must, Greg. If you must, go ahead. For okay, the new, watch for the, the, the new viewers. Watch, watch the ball. How can you not move the Winnipeg D line, who is a yard away? when you know the snap count and you know the play and you even got off the ball first how well, do we not get that one o-line got off the ball first the center the, the other the, ones were the, yeah. behind if you look at the go the, behind the center nice and low look at, and look at the stick your face here. over there so so the but center you see, like one, the center one moves, line goes and one o-line goes first. guard moves and then the tackle moves yeah. like in, yeah. in in that order so they should all be moving at the same time exactly but you can't put that on dom davis because you know and uh, the D line keyed on the movement of the center, and yet you guys keyed, it's like the rest of our line keyed on the movement of the Winnipeg line. You see it's that brutal. Big Hill met him, and then someone else met him on top of the pile. Yeah. Because Davis is too high again. Yeah. Or he should right jump. Can't you just jump over yeah, the pile? Put, yeah, yeah. The I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I can't put this one all on Dom Davis when the O line is that lackadaisical. That, you don't go in succession on a short yard. You go on the snap count. I don't care what the heck his cadence is. When he calls hop, you go. This is bad. Yeah. When you see your center go, go. I don't think, I think that's what they're doing. If if they were listening to to the, to, to uh, Davis, then 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 when he says, the, gives the signal and, and the center, the center's not gonna move till he hears the signal. So the fact that the ball is moving means the signal was given and all the others should have heard it too. But the fact that they're moving after the center moves tells me that maybe they're, they're only moving once they see the center move. Yeah. But then they're real slow reaction again. Yeah. That's poor reaction for an O-line then. That's a full yard grid. You think you, you would, I mean, it's a full, well, I, thought it was center, closer. I thought it was top. closer than that. I know. Because then, you know, because we saw the replay from on top and we saw Vernon reach out, right? So, ah, maybe it's like a couple of, uh, a couple of inches. This is a full yard. Yeah. Would you have gone for it? You have to. How can you not go for it? Like, punt it? You're up by three. Yeah, they drive the field on you every single time. Yeah. <laughs> but again, at full yard, you know the play, you know the snap count. It, it, if, 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 if the center moves, you should all, I mean, you're, you're in a, and I, I get it, the guards are a little bit closer to the center and the tackles are a little bit further back. So the tackle really, when he looks to his side, he's going to see the guard's shoulder, etc., etc. But just, why no, don't you all just pinch down in the middle and then no, Dominic Davis has to go with some, some aggression too. There's no excuse. He's, there's no excuse. Yeah. Everyone messed up here. O-line messed up. Uh, Davis messed up. Even the coaches messed up. They need to be practicing this. I, I think the reason why they're not executing well is because they're not practicing this enough. They're not well, focusing on the We were out of practice practice. not that long ago, and we didn't see them once practice yeah. short well, yards. I, I don't know. When, uh, it's hard to we say. We were there for the full practice, yeah, but, to be honest. So, yeah, but maybe, but yeah, the, you say. know, the way, the way our short yardage has been this whole year tells me that they're not practicing it. Remember that one uh, game where we showed where, uh, you know, they, they were not they were not moving, right? Or... or they were just not in sync. So, yeah. there was that one game too where they uh, they ended up going with Adams for all these short yardages halfway through the game, right? Yeah. So, so, they, so that Couture, that's the only O lineman that, because he went first, he's the one that shot through. Yeah. He's the only guy that shot through. Yeah. Yeah, there was that one game, remember, where uh, everyone moved except for the center. Yeah, I'm like, he's so. the first one to move. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. Uh, and okay. you'll see him at the end there. Like, there, you he's, he's one lion. He's one lion there, and then the rest are nowhere to be found. Do you know why? <laughs> he goes through, because they let him go through, because Dom Davis is so, so freaking high. His head should be the same height as the butt of that center. And Davis is mm. so high. Let the center go. We'll go right over top of the center, because those other guys were late coming off. Yeah. Anyway, so... 
Wow. Short yardage is a big weakness for us. So they go off tackle, but it looks like they they got the flanks. No, no, I'm, too, I'm right? saying you see a bird's eye view, you will see Winnipeg's D line. Yeah. Peak on because they let Couture go because Davis is so high they can see Davis all the right. whole time. Do you go off tackle? You mean yeah, like, obviously? Right, yeah, scrape down the line yeah. maybe because you have this receiver coming around might be able to take out this corner guy. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what they did for the uh, the third and uh, on the one yard line uh, the touchdown right. He, he went. It right, kind of went right the gap or off tackle. Can't remember. Yeah. So. Anyway, we, okay. we turn the ball over, uh, and then Winnipeg scores uh, a field goal. We tie the game uh, with, with like 12 seconds left. Um, and then, you know, we get the ball back uh, with eight seconds left. And instead of uh, settling for, for a tie, we go, we go deep. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, this was no, and I think he would have get caught. I mean, there's another guy that was gonna catch him too. Should have gone down at the 25. Should have gone down right now, right now. This was painful. Wow, oh, even again, yeah, should have, should have, could have, should have. But yeah, those guys, they were coming, they were flying. This is painful. Here's another uh, replay. It was, it was painful because for a moment we thought he could actually make it. No, I, I, I thought where I was hoping. Because he shed, he shed two blocks. You should have gone yeah, towards that, but the that goal guy, post. But that guy slowed him down enough. The cavalry yeah. came. Run to the goal post. Um, here, here's, here's, a, here's a replay with a timer on top. So he caught the ball with five seconds. It is still a bit, little bit far for... And you see, he bobbles, he bobbles the ball here. So it wasn't, it wasn't the best thrown ball, but kudos to him for catching the ball, focusing yeah. on catching the ball. It's still too early to go down. So I don't... I can't... 100% fault him, right? It's too he's going to get some yards to get in a, make yeah. a makeable field goal, right? Because, you know, 45, if he goes down, then, you know, we may not make 52, it. 52, right. So, now, this now guy... Now, he should have went down. I mean, yeah. Once he saw the 35-yard line, then go down. Yeah, that's right. So, if this guy made the tackle, but but he, <laughs> he manages to shed the tackle. And, oh. and after the game, he did say that he thought at this point that he can outrun he can outrun these guys. I, I don't think he saw this guy. I think he looked at this guy and says, I can outrun him. And But I think that guy would have caught him anyways. But maybe not at the five yard line. Oh yeah, so the other guy. Oh actually yeah. that was the guy who caught him, yeah. Yeah, I mean yeah. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <sighs> but but you know, it's not all in this play. Um if no, we, we had so many not. opportunities to to seal the game. Uh, we didn't seal it. It had to come down to this, and uh, so we can't we can't fault him. But he did ad admit that the the play was to to go down. He was he was told by the coaches to go down. Um, so so it goes into overtime. Um, you better have a hell of a Western final. Yeah. Overtime. You better have a different playbook, different blocking scheme, different everything. Oh, he better everything. come out and be laying a smack on and everything. Yeah. Overtime, Winnipeg manages to get a touchdown. And I mean, let's be honest, this would have been such a fitting way to host Winnipeg, wouldn't it? Last play of the game, no time left, score a touchdown, put a dagger in the, It would have no. been nice. I, 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 think, I think if we had won this game, then I think our chances of losing the Western final is, is much higher. Oh, because, of course, of course. But I'm just saying, it would have been yeah. so satisfactory to see Winnipeg lose this way. Yeah. But I would rather we lose this and have a better chance of winning the Western final. Why? So. Well, that's really big picture thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather lose, and then we, we see where, where our shortcomings are. Yeah, because and hopefully well, fix them. Because if we won this, win. if yeah. we won this game, do you think we would fix all? We have so many shortcomings. So many we can't fix them anyways. But, but we, we can, can try least, to scheme. Like yeah. you said, you can try to scheme, scheme away from away, them. But, True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I see your point. I see yeah. the method of your madness. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. then those plays that you thought would, you don't get, there's certain plays you chuck from the playbook against Winnipeg because they're just not going to work. Yeah. Certain plays you keep. Yeah. And so just figure out how to stop a three man pass rush with six guys. Yeah. One last play to show on overtime when it was our turn. Uh, first, first play. I think. I think this was. Oh, no. This was the key. The first play. Uh, Roland, you're killing me. 
I guess so. Well, at least so, it didn't take any. He went down the kind of. Uh, yeah. Well, you try to avoid the. Yeah. The straight or the, the the swing of that uh, the arm, and then he lost his balance. Yeah. I mean, so, you got to be. He's got to be like pretty tired and beaten up by now. Like what? He went right through two two guys. Yeah. Oh I, man! Only if he caught a little bit of that face mask as the guy was going down. Yeah. You see? They're there. Yeah. Oh. How many did they send? Four? Six? Oh no! No wait, wait, wait. There's Jefferson. Oh, Jefferson's okay. waiting. Oh, no. Jefferson oh, dropped back. And then they over, yeah, they they blitz. He's double covered nine yards away from the play. Oh boy. Yeah, but he wasn't he wasn't trying to come in. He was holding. Yeah, he him. was he was there to. That was a good stunt. Like, then they they sent in DBs too, and then yeah. outside linebacker, right? Yeah. So they overloaded. Yeah. Maybe they thought they're going to go to Mizell, so they and then they just sent. They, it, yeah, it was a different look. So. Yeah, so this play that's, really that's dug, a play. dug a deep hole for us because in you know yeah. first down we, we go backwards and we got two downs left. Um, and you like that aggressive play call, right, Roland? This for Winnipeg, for Winnipeg, for Winnipeg, yeah, yeah. Because then like you see their their linebacker, that you see a DB up there. You see, I mean, you you drop Jefferson back because you say, well, he's playing a double teamed. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. And and they're able to be aggressive because they know that they got eight points. When, when True. The offense was Good up, point. Right? So, Good point. Um, so anyway, yeah, those. Uh, that's that's the game. Then we should be aggressive when we're up by two scores. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's. I always, I always say, you know, playing conservative, uh, you know, you're, you're going to lose more than you're going to win, right? Playing not to win, you mean? Yeah. Or not to lose. Playing not to lose. Not to lose, sorry, not to lose, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the game. Any oh, final boy. thoughts on the game before we go into Passion, passion Corner? Well, since Brick is pondering, I yeah. predicted a Winnipeg win by 10 points, and it's because of the all line difference. Yeah. Um, the, the running back position, and after watching this game and how Oliveira rushed really well yes. but i think he had 88 receiving yards as well like and yeah. every time zach's in trouble like blinds did bring get some pressure yeah he just dumps it off to Oliveira, and Oliveira like makes someone miss or he just gets a first down and like it's second and long and oh he just dumps it off to Oliveira, and then that we we just don't have any anyone close yeah. to the, I mean, it's it's a massive advantage Winnipeg has, yeah. and 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 you know, Adams is in trouble. He needs a relief valve, and we got we don't have one. Yeah, nope. Like he, either he's in a rhythm, he's hitting you on first down, or he's making big big throws downfield. But apart from that, we he has no relief valve. Yeah, yeah. We're we're one dimensional. That's that's the biggest problem. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you, Arthur. Oliveira, he rushed well. I mean, he didn't rush. He didn't go off for a big game like I was worried he would. But when he did rush, it was effective. It mm. needed, it, whatever was needed, his rushing got done. Um, and yeah, I, I hear you. We don't have a, we don't have a, and, and I think there's a big disparity between their O-line and our O-line as well. Oh, yeah. Um, but we've been harping on that. Our O-line is just too nice. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I mean, we, I, I, I'm at a loss. I mean, and I also noticed, maybe you guys can correct me, but I noticed that Winnipeg's coverage guys, they closed on our receivers a lot faster than we closed on theirs in the second half, the whatever second adjustments half. they made. In I mean, when, we, when they got a ball, it took a while for our, one of our guys to get there because they were just finding that space, that hole that had running space. We... I don't know. Even in the first half, when Vernon was hitting our guys, they were going down right away. Like you watched the, that catch to Hatcher. He turned down. He goes. Oh, they didn't try to run through or run by. They just caught it. Went down. Is that me? Am I seeing things? What, 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 what's your guys' opinion on that? I, I don't, Is that lack of aggression too? I, yeah, it didn't seem like they were trying, for the most part, to to get yak yards. Uh, a lot of our catches. I mean, other than the one by Katoi, right? Uh, uh, a lot of our catches, they they seem to catch and then go down. I don't know. 
it's a, yeah. maybe there's Winnipeg Zone is set up. I mean, in like in the first few series for the for the Lions offensive series, maybe there maybe the Winnipeg Zone is a little bit more close to um, where BC the BBC receivers are, are doing their curls, or they're just sitting in those seams. It's just hard to it's hard to say without seeing the full the full um, full video. Yeah. But um, no, I, I mean. I think BC close on some of them. Some of them they had too much space. It's um I mean again, some of them could have been it could have been man coverage and these guys got open. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't know. It's just the, the, I guess maybe our defense was out of gas, maybe in that yeah. second half by yeah. the second half oh, because yeah. they were just getting beat by that same play, that same receiver sitting at thirteen yards in that in that little soft spot or where Oliveira happened to be where Zach could just dump it to him in that little spot. It was that same spot to Zach's right every time. Not quite in the flat, but just kind of right in that vacated linebacker. And hey, kudos to the defense. We didn't get beat deep once tonight, but we got beat deeply underneath before our guys could come up. I mean, how many plays are they? Four or five plays they've covered 40, 50, 60 yards down the field on us? Well, they're trying to take away the deep ball that Winnipeg killed us in the prior yeah. game. But when so they got they're, the, the the intermediate intermediately deep or the deeply intermediate yeah. ball, but we got to. They're not giving up the big play, yeah, and gotta, then yeah. it, the defense's scheme almost worked. I think oh. it produced takeaways. Yeah, you didn't get to be deep. If the offense did a little bit more, in, and basically a third and one or a little bit more in the fourth quarter, BC wins. Yeah. Yeah. So the defense did enough. I don't, you know, I mean, yeah, they more, went think, a lot I of think yards. More than enough. Actually, I, I'm going to go yeah. uh, further and say the defense, uh, uh, they, they they did everything they, they should have done. Uh, you know, they, they had the takeaways, uh, even even after, you know, uh, one takeaway that ended up in nothing, they got another takeaway. Uh, those, were, those were long drives that they were out on the field, right? And then two and outs, and then they're back on the field. Um, you know, uh, I even said, what, what else can we ask them? You know, get a touchdown? I mean, to, to him, I tried, uh, but he's yeah. not. <laughs> so. You might have taken defensive touchdowns the way yeah. the offense kind of puttered out, petered yeah. out. So yeah, I, I, think the, I think defense is uh, least of our concerns after this game. But, but like Although said, they, 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 they give up almost 500 yards, but. But on a bend, a don't break, pass. you give up the 500 yards. If that's between the fives all the time, you know, it's. Well, yeah. I mean, again, the, the offense sputtered and lot in the second half so i mean yeah. i mean what was the stat breakdowns after the after the half right i mean i think i think winnipeg's offenses I mean, they scored a lot of their they got a lot of their yards in the second half. yeah exactly and it's the, almost like they uncorked a whole new playbook for the second half yeah that's good coaching they made good yeah. adjustments yeah oh like, like roland's point is defense was quite tired yeah all right so hopefully hopefully uh you know we learn we as in the, the Lions team uh, learn from this and uh, and we'll be able to make the right adjustments. So let's go to Passion Corner. Greg, you all set? I'm all set. Okay, let's let's go for it. Wow, this is going to be tough. Leo's Legion, we are here with Passion Corner where we're handing out the props and the poops. And I'll tell you what, as tough as this game was to watch and to be at and to kind of sit and soak in after the uh, the loss itself, we've got three prop points to hand out. We got some players that kind of went above and beyond and uh, did a lot more than we expected. Just unfortunately, the, the, the end result wasn't there to reward their efforts. But let's get right to it. The first prop point has to go to our man, number 86, Javon Yak Yards Katoy. He never seems to, um, fails to amaze us. Always seems to get those yak yards after and punish those people that try to tackle him. 70 yard touchdown. I think that's back to back games. He's got, no, sorry, Edmonton game and then this game. Then he's gotten that sideline uh, pass and just rumbled on down there. It was good to see with everything that he does in the trenches, all that dirty work in the ugly areas, the blocking, the chipping, the rubbing, those tough passes over the middle. Just great to see Javon just run and take one to the house. You deserve it, Javon. Prop point for you, buddy. Second prop point has to go to our man, Sione Tuahema. Tell you what, two fumbles when uh, the, the Winnipeg was threatening to drive. It was just nice to see Matthew get a sack to, to Hema, pick up that ball. And the second one where he just took it right out of Zach's hands and ran it right back for 51 yards. One sack, two fumbles. 
prop point to you, Sioni. We hope to see you a lot more come playoff time. Make your presence felt, buddy. Third prop point's got to go to our defensive captain, Mr. TJ Lee. All over the field, making tackles, not getting beat. He was the, 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 the epitome of consistency for the defense, who just looked like they ran out of gas towards the end of the game because they were on the field just too darn long. TJ, props to you, buddy. Hope we can give you more prop points as well. And now comes that little icon that I really don't like handing out, but hey, it's got to go to a couple of our guys. It's going to be a bittersweet to hand out a poop point because I've been chatting with them uh, via Instagram. Mr. Dominic Davis, I'm sorry I got to give it to you because you had the ball, but third and a yard, you're six foot, I don't know, six foot 930. You should have got that yard. You got to run lower. That's fundamental football. Get your head down behind the center's butt. Get that yard. Who knows what would have happened after we got that third and one. It was late in the game. Hopefully we could have just taken the rest of that quarter and put this game to bed. You know whatever the snap count is. You command time in that huddle. You let every one of those guys know we got to get this yard. You're the leader in the short yardage situation. Got to do better. Poop point on you this time, Mr. Davis. And the second poop point, this one's really tough to hand out. Boy, it's a Dominic's, Dominic's uh, dominated poop point time. He's going to Dominic Rhymes. You confessed after the game you should have gone down, but I know you're a receiver. It's in your DNA to try to score that touchdown, especially when you break all those tackles. Instinct takes over, but sometimes you got to have the mind overpower that instinct. Had you gone down, yeah, and it's hindsight being 2020. Had you gone down, we'd have had time to kick that field goal. You did what you thought was best, but it wasn't the right thing to do in that situation. So Dominic Davis, Dominic Rhymes, so sorry we got to call you guys out on the poop points. It is bittersweet because you guys have done so much prop point worthy stuff for this team so let's hope we hand out nothing but prop points next week we got hamilton who looked pretty darn good at home this thanksgiving day weekend they laid a beating on us at our park time to get it back go in there take it personal and take it to hamilton get the winning ways back into this team i'm out all right yeah it's it's kind of hard giving that proof point to Rhymes, but because uh, even in that play itself, right, he, he, he catching that ball was was pretty tough. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's put this behind us. Look ahead, like uh, Greg said, Hamilton predictions, thoughts. What do we need do, to do? Do the Lions play their A team, or do they? I mean, they they need basically they need to win these two games and hope. Winnipeg loses their next two. I think I think that's not reachable. That's not realistic. Winnipeg's not. No, gonna you... Winnipeg's going to rest people like Toronto did. They're well, I mean, they're two. hoping that Lions lose one game, then they clinch, right? But yeah. if Lions win, then it prompts Winnipeg to at least try to win. Win Winnipeg has a bye this week. They have right? a bye. So do you do what Toronto does and set out a few starters on the road? in Hamilton I mean if if we if we're not gonna if we're no longer uh, aiming for the uh, for the first place in the West then that makes sense so the question Are we is healthy enough to sit out starters there's the other question the question is do we want to uh, aim for the first is I it, think is, you got to give Evan, you got to get Dane Evans time behind center. Yeah. Just just in case, right? Like he, you know, he hasn't played a lot this year, and I think yeah. he needs more reps. Um, yeah. Winnipeg put Prukop in uh, in that one play, like a second and five or something. There was no need to put him in, but but you know, it's just to kind of give him some reps in in live gameplay, right? Well, I mean, I think. As long as the Lions have a chance at first, they're gonna play their starters until, you know, they can't, I guess. So, all right, prediction time. Hmm. Well, <laughs> the prediction depends on whether the starters are gonna be in the <laughs> It's hard to hard, it's hard to say. I, I, so I'm predicting that the starters will play because okay. they still have a chance. Yeah. Right? Okay. I mean, until they don't have a chance then. 
then they will pull him. And then it's on the road. And then last game is, um, you know, Calgary's visiting. So yeah. it's Calgary um, at home. So, you know. Ah, uh, okay. So I think the Lions win by touchdown. Okay. In, in, in Hamilton. Hamilton's been playing better like they've been on an upward once upward they trajectory. clinched the playoff spot they've been better and they, they're healthy at the quarterback position now yeah 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 i'm just saying i just have a feeling right i have a feeling right now lines are pretty dejected and yeah. you know i think i think the we'll see what happens i think that i mean the receivers are healthy uh vernon seemed to be healthy so we're not we're not we're not playing it we're not playing winnipeg right so i i i'm 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 predicting fearlessly predicting abc so so if we win this game the following week uh winnipeg plays uh who do they play uh, edmonton edmonton goes to winnipeg so if if we don't if we play our starters in hamilton then the calgary game we're going to be playing our starters too because yeah. we, we need so we have to we're, we're not we're, we're not going to be sending anyone for the whole season then right well we, we do have a bye the last regular season week yeah but in the sense and then of, we go to the western and then we host a western semi in, in the sense of giving our, our our backups some reps just in case i would say in this hamilton team it's half and half then it becomes like a, a pick em, unless you guys think otherwise but i'll stand by my prediction because Wow, why not? Okay. Because we don't know it. I don't have enough information. Yeah. Gregory, come on. 27-19 Lions. Because I predicted a 5-1. and one. We've got our 1. Which I didn't want it to be this 1. But hey, <laughs> it's behind me now. And maybe you're right, Arthur. Like, okay, we, I got the injury report here as we were doing our, our podcast here that Mizell is banged up. Hardy had all number one starting reps today, which makes me wonder, you've just brought this guy in. What happened to Shivers? I mean, if we're concerned about Mizell catching out of the backfield, Shivers is even worse. Right, so maybe Hardy's better. But again, why are we not giving LaFrance a shot? I'm calling it out right now. Mr. LaFrance, we got your bat. We're pumping your tires. We think you deserve a shot. And maybe, I agree with you, Arthur, give Dane Evans some time behind center. And maybe you use this Hamilton game to work on what little running game we have and see what we can do with the pieces we have to improve it somewhat, to at least make it palpable. But I'm predicting a Lions win because... Well, I'm hoping they have a bad taste in their mouth from that Hamilton game, letting James Butler run all over them. Maybe our run defense has gotten a little bit better. We were able to shut down Kevin Brown in Edmonton. Maybe we can shut down James Butler in Hamilton. But either way, we need to win this game because limping into the playoffs, even if we host one, I'm not a fan of. So we're dejected. Hopefully, uh, we, we, we should be motivated to get back in the win column. The guys seem to say all the right things in the post game, but I'm just saying, like we need it. Winnipeg, we need this game. I don't, I don't know how. We just, we just need it. But I'm predicting 27. What did I say? 27, 19. Yeah. I mean, put the pressure back on Winnipeg. They have to at least, you know, beat Edmonton, yeah. right? If you lose at Edmonton, then you give BC an opening. An opening, yeah. But we have, yeah, because we can't end up tied at the end of the season with them. We, well, yeah, we they, keep, Winnipeg yeah. has to win, has to lose both games. Yeah. But then yeah. it makes that last game they play count. And who are they so playing? They, they play Edmonton and who to Calgary. end the season? Calgary. They, the oh, Bombers it, play Edmonton and Calgary? Hold on, let me check. No, yeah, yeah, Winnipeg, yeah. They, they play Edmonton at home. And we we play yeah they they have a week off and then play Edmonton Calgary. Yeah. Then we play we play Hamilton Calgary and then we have a week off. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, Calgary did beat Winnipeg before. I think that was Winnipeg's first loss was to Calgary, wasn't it? Might be. I don't recall. I that doesn't matter. Yeah. Calgary I mean, beat Toronto. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't matter. I mean, Calgary can. They have it within them. Yeah. Okay. Twenty-seven, nineteen. 
Yeah, it's going to be hard to predict it. I'm trying to think if we're starting. I think what I think they should do is is play play our starters for the first half and then our mm -hmm. backups for the second half to give them uh, to give them some some reps. But if we do that, then the chance of us winning the game drops down significantly. Uh, I mean, I would tell Vernon to not to drop back, but don't take a sack, throw the ball away. Yeah, you know, has, like, so don't take any punishment. There's no need. Has Has Hamilton clinched uh, anything? They've clinched a playoff spot. Uh, a home playoff spot? Is it, is no, I just know it's, they clinch it they, they, because there is no Western crossover because Hamilton has got that last spot. Well, they have their, they have everything to fight for. They they're trying to get the semifinal home gate. Okay, I guess. Yes. okay, okay. So they're they're going to be motivated. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, ooh, ooh. so if if they're going to be motivated and we're and if we do only half half a game with our starters, it's going to be hard. To, <laughs> that's going to be but hard to pull. Roland, need I remind you, you predicted six and zero in this final home but, stretch. But, but, but that's gone because we lost to Winnipeg. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to reach that anymore. Uh, so. I guess <laughs> <laughs> my my prediction is kind of intertwined with what I think BC should do, because uh, because I think the focus now uh, should should be less on the winning top spot, but should be more on how do we beat Winnipeg in the finals. So uh, that that's that's my feeling. Right? I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys agree or not. Oh so, yeah, oh yeah, I agree with you 100. percent So so if if then that that means these two games. It doesn't really matter whether we win or not. Uh, of course, uh, Greg, you're right. Uh, you know they've got a bad taste in their mouth. They want to win. Uh, so, so I think we're going to put in our, our starters in the first half and try to get as many points as we can. And then the second half, we're going to give uh, our, our backups uh, some some reps. Uh, if, if if not, then it's the fourth quarter. But I think that's what we should do because you never know um, when they might need to step up, right? Um, yeah, and then they can always um, bring their full team, the full starters against Calgary in the home finale, regular season yeah. finale. Yeah, because you don't want to go into the playoffs losing three straight games. Yeah, so, that's right. Now we do generally play well against Calgary. This yeah. year we have anyway. Yeah, so far. Yeah. So unless they start their third string quarterback, right? Yeah, that's true. They got We need to. They have to start there. <laughs> and they won't. They won't. Do they Will, they? <laughs> Will they? I don't even know. Do they have a third-string quarterback? Mayor has been there oh, all God. year, so <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, no, yeah. who do they put in in short yardage? They don't use Mayor. They use Stevens, somebody. right? Stevens. Tommy Stevens. Guy. That's it. Yeah. Tommy Stevens. Yes. So, I don't know. It's going to be tough. I think. Uh, I think if, still hasn't predicted yeah, if, Hamilton, you know. if Hamilton is motivated and, and we <laughs> put in, can you backpedal more than, than Roland? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, but at the same time, uh, we, we need. We, yeah, hard to say. Roland, okay, Roland, okay, I'll give you two scenarios. His head and his heart this? are fighting big time. Yeah. I can see. I know. It. Okay. I'll give you scenario one, Roland, just so we can like finish this off. Okay. They play their starters. What's the prediction? If, All the way through. Okay. If they play their starters, then then I think we win. If okay. We, if we play our starters all the way through and the goal is to win the game, then I think win by how many? I think we're gonna win. Uh, the last time we played Hamilton, they they killed us, right? At home. So, yeah. So we couldn't stop the run. Yeah. Oh, so soul think, sucking loss. Yeah, that's right. That was a soul sucking loss. So I think it's because gonna... I wasn't at the game. Let's be honest. <laughs> so I yes, think it's gonna be close. Yes, yes. I think we might win by. Uh, I'll say win by, win by five. Ooh. Win by five with the starters, all game. Well, because don't forget, Hamilton yeah. will be motivated. Still. Hamilton will all be right, motivated. Right. They'll be running right. Butler, uh, so so you know we, we're gonna have to tweak and and use this as you know test as testing ground with some of our new schemes, right? Okay, so. And then scenario two, it's mixed. Scenario two makes a half hit starters, a, yeah. half seconds. So then, then we lose the second game. teamers. Yeah, we lose the game. And we probably lose by 14. Oh my goodness. So I'm the positive guy? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this. Well, well, I think in the second half with our, with our backups, it's going to be hard to, um, hard to score. I just have a feeling that, I mean, Hamilton's playing well. 
And the thing is, you can't always play well. You're gonna stub your toe here and there. Okay. And maybe they read their press clippings and they went into BC and they laid a beat down <laughs> and it's gonna be easy. We just had to hand a ball to Butler and he's gonna run rough shot over the Lions interior. I just have a feeling. I well, maybe they employ the same scheme they used against Trey Ford and Kevin Brown against Matthew Schultz yeah. and James Butler. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That that would work. Yeah, because but Brown is a pretty powerful runner. He's not a little scat back. He's he's got some heft to it when he hits that line. Mm. Yeah, and he's a low runner, just like James Butler. He's a low center of gravity. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see Evans come in on the second half and still score some points. I think I think if we do that, then. Then that'd be wonderful, but I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if we can do that at this point. Both times we've looked at Evans taking over the starting spot for injury or what have you. I he hasn't inspired a lot of confidence in me. Yeah. Well, apart from the Edmonton game, the Saskatchewan game that he won, he came in er, uh, early. He was able to get that win. Um, it wasn't like massively um, con um, convincing. And then of course Edmonton. Well, that was convincing. 300 yards passing, but. Edmonton couldn't score a point, so you didn't really think that you were going to lose that game. And then again, he got snowed under in Winnipeg, and that's it. And then other than that, it's like a series here and there where he just drops back and gets sacked. Yep. Yeah. So again, he's coming cold. So yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But it's also too now. There, there's there's an interesting point. When Evans is back there, he drops back, gets sacked. When Adams is back there, he drops back. See, I wonder what the common denominator is there. Well, we all know that. Yeah, I, I still think it's a, a combination of the O line and the quarterbacks not making the reads fast enough. You gotta have an internal clock, right? Well, when you've been in the league as long as Adams has, you think that internal clock would be uh, there? Well, apparently, just in our replays, he doesn't have to count farther than three before he's gonna get heat. So, yeah. to me, if it's three seconds, even on a three-man rush, yeah. But no, you gotta that's adjust. Not right? all on him. You gotta adjust. Yeah, it's true. So, but three man, three seconds. That's tough, man. Yeah. When you have six blocking three, you've got three seconds. There's there's something off there. Yeah, I mean sometimes it was yeah. more. I mean it's like a you know four guys coming at you and yeah. six in protection and yeah. or so whatever, you, right? You look at that that one where he got sacked. Where those two outside rush of Winnipeg were both double teamed, yet they were individually able to drive the double teams both back into the lap of Adams who was already eight yards back in the shotgun snap. No, Adam stepped back up too. He, he stepped I'm, into... I'm they, yeah. they were strong mm -hmm. enough because they both start on the line. They were strong enough to push the double team back and collapse and, and basically move the double team where they wanted it to go. Because they know where Adams is going to be. He yeah. does this like whatever seven yeah. step drop exactly. or whatever. Like maybe he should he should have stepped up but, earlier and exactly. then split the gap and went for a run. My point is, yeah. a two guy should be able to stop oh, the motion sure. of then he, one should, guy. Then, they, then Adams got to work with that, right? He's yeah. like, there. Adams is too predictable where he is, right? Then he's got to step up earlier, not later. Too late, right? He got to step up earlier, and then those guys are behind him. Yeah. And then he could try to make a play with his feet. I think. It's a combination. Yeah, I agree, Greg. I agree with your point 100. percent One guy shouldn't shouldn't push back too, but then and Adams got to be smart too. Like oh, avoid of course, that. Of other course, other but... quarterbacks do that. Come on, yeah. it's not like okay, okay. One guy pushes back to Adams. You're not at fault. Like he's got to make a better play. But I mean, he's... you can get away with it playing the 500 team. Yeah, but like you said, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. How is, how can two guys not have enough fight to take well, on one I, guy? That, I mean, I don't I, care whatever I, yeah. Adams, I'm talking just right there, like, trench play. Okay. Trench play, That that's, those old linemen gotta, gotta figure well, it out. To be honest, for that play, it was one old lineman, one, one, either Katoy or Mizell. So it's not two old linemen, it was one old lineman and one. Mm, yeah. Guy. And, so, and to yeah. be fair too, uh, they're they're not necessarily supposed to stop the uh, the, the rushing um, defensive end in his tracks. They're supposed to redirect him. 
So, yeah. so, so they're they're not supposed they're not supposed to stop him. They redirect him because they're gonna use his energy and motion to kind of let him take an, an arc, him, yeah. an yeah. arc around, Didn't and then, like they did, and then go That's behind. All I'm saying. Uh, well, the, I think Adam did a deep draw. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, the thing. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we're going to go around in circles. We're going to go around in circles. Yeah, but yeah, I, I hear six, what you're saying, Greg. Six should be able to handle three, period. Well, yeah, 100%. I'm just saying, I think Adams can help that situation a little. Yeah. Right? I mean, he can O-line's if he's get smart. Near. O-line has to have those guys on their ass. Right. Fair enough. Bottom line. Fair enough. So you're, you're giving Adams the pass. Nope, so. not giving him the pass. I'm just saying, as an O-lineman, if though if you're rushing three against Winnipeg six, do you think those three are going to dictate Winnipeg's O-line? Heck no. Maybe they, the odd time, but let's be honest. They, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're, yeah, I'll leave it, but our O-line just still got to get nastier. And they, they better get nasty in Hamilton. And my rebuttal to you, Greg, is yes, they should. I agreed, 100%. But Adam's got to help them out. And he could have helped them out because I've right. seen other quarterbacks yeah. help them out. Yeah. So he's not like a sitting duck back there. After where three the, seconds. The ends are going, getting pushed, and they're pushing him right to Adams. Yeah. And Adams steps up at the wrong time. Exactly. So I think Adams can help that situation a bit. He doesn't have to be such a a sitting duck. A yeah. predictable target? Yeah. Yes. Like, he's got to move around. he got to do something, right? You, like, what, this is what Roland says. you got to adapt. Yeah. you got to see what's going on and adapt, right? You can't, like, it, this is... This is not perfect football, yeah. right? Perfect football, yes, Greg. Three guys are not going to touch Adams with a six six man protection. But guess what happens? Things break down. So this is why the quarterback is paid the big bucks to make a play. Yeah, and you know, like like I said, right? We we we're stuck with the personnel we have. We can't. It's too late to change personnel. So we gotta we gotta take the good and the bad, the strengths and the weaknesses. So we gotta the smart teams know what their weaknesses are and are able to work around that. So so in our case, we're not very smart then. We right gotta now. we gotta be able to scheme. That's why I, you know I, I've been looking at you know doing you know little uh, you know having the running back or the receivers kind of hit bump them. Having having the quarterback uh, not be in the same spot, having him come out of the pocket, uh, little things like that. H- having getting the ball out quickly, right? So even if they get to you, you know the ball's gone. Um, a mixture of those, we we gotta do mm-hmm. something because we can't keep doing the same thing. Right? More does not when what is not at Winnipeg's level yeah. consistently enough. I mean, we're almost we almost pulled it off, yeah, right? Yeah, we yeah. almost pulled it off. So it's that's why I still think we can win the Western final if we make the right adjustments that overcome yeah. our weakness. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were blown out at home, right? We yeah. well, statistically we were kind of blown out. <laughs> right? <laughs> but like it's on the scoreboard, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but then they they led in takeaways, which evened out that that disparity in net net yardage. Offensive yet yardage, yardage. They're there. They're close. Like I, I, to Roland's point, they're close. They just need some tweaks. They need some game planning, some schemes. But there is a difference between these two teams, and, and BC can beat narrowly some of these 500 teams by doing this. But against Winnipeg, and Winnipeg didn't play mistake free. That's for sure, yes. right? So they played maybe a B game. They they held they, they played well at spurts, but I mean those three first three BC lines offensive drives Winnipeg did not look good defensively, yeah. and then all their all their giveaways did not look good. So they played a B game and they, they beat us. Yeah. Not even with their A game. Okay, let me throw a question to you two gentlemen. Do our coaches have it in their intellectual pockets to come up with something other than what we've come up with to this point to beat Winnipeg sorry sorry in this order to a overcome or cover up our weaknesses to out scheme our weaknesses and be enough of an out scheming to beat Winnipeg do the coaches we have have it have what it takes to come up with those schemes that's a tough question let me let me answer it this way. We've seen uh, our special teams turn around, right? Yeah. With Benavides come in, uh, we, so we've we've seen that. So there's there's a very positive progression. We've seen uh, that one game where RP schemed against uh, Edmonton. Yep. And and overcame, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, the, the, their, their, their quarterback who, who no one knew how to handle up till that point. Um, we've seen, we've seen spurts of Maximit um, coming up with good schemes as well. Like even even in this game with Winnipeg, the first half was was uh, was brilliant. Um, you know, where, where we fell short in in Winnipeg was um, we didn't adjust, um, we didn't adapt to Winnipeg's adjustment in the second half. Um, so, Is that because he doesn't have what it takes, or because we just couldn't? Because whatever we came up with just didn't work on the fly. Yeah, that's so so. The way I'm going to answer is that I think we have the capability because we've okay. seen it. We've seen our coaching staff rise up and, and, and do it. Uh, can we do it within a game, adjust within from one half to the second half or even from one quarter to another quarter? Um, I think given the fact that they have the, the, the ability to do it, I think, I think we can. Um, so I think it's just, it's just being very, very conscious of that effort, right? Knowing that you know I've I've got a playbook uh, a plan, but but if if I see the 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 opponent adjusting, then I gotta be ready to move to to go to to contingencies and backup plans. Okay, sir. Um, hmm. I think that the coaches is at a disadvantage because Winnipeg have better players. And they have better players and more experienced players at the key positions that know how to dig deep and know how to limit their mistakes and get the job done in crunch time. We just don't have that experience. Um, they have it at the most critical, the mo most critical positions. Yeah. The only, the only position where BC ha is better than Winnipeg is at kicker, place kicker. So Sean Wade is, you know, because he was no, I mean, but he doesn't definitely doesn't have Sean Wade's resume. So other than that, um, it's hard. I would say, I would turn this back question back to you, Greg. If you took the BC coaches with the Winnipeg players versus the Winnipeg coaches and the BC players, who comes up on top? Okay. So and you're I'm going to say it's the Winnipeg players and the BC coaches all day long. Okay, but that's not the case. So that's what I'm saying. You've been given the card you've been dealt is what you have. Then I'm still all, then that, that just tells you the answer. So they you're saying cannot out -scheme. Are, oh, they cannot out-scheme. They cannot out-scheme. Because you're saying, can the coaches out-scheme Winnipeg? No, they don't have the players to out-scheme them. Because when chips are down, they know what they have to do, right? When the chips are down, I'm not saying, I don't know, I know Lawler's gonna go down at the 30 yard line with a second left, or Schoen's gonna do, do it and take one, you know, take one, take one for the team. You know, maybe he can get another three yards and get a touchdown, but you know, he goes, ah, ah, for the, for the team, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go down willingly so we can kick a field goal and win. Of course, I want to score a touchdown, but I'm willing to do that. When when they're, when BC gets the ball in overtime, they're hungry for the quarterback on defense and they go after him, right? And they get the job done. We, we don't have that hunger. I mean, we just don't know how to win yet. Not okay, to the extent so, okay, of Winnipeg. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that's going back to our argument from way back when intensity. So you're saying we are handcuffed with the talent we have. So it doesn't matter. Our coaches, so you're saying our coaches have, so you're saying if Winnipeg's coaches were here, they still couldn't out ski Winnipeg with the BC coaches there with the players. So you're saying it comes right. down to the talent. I think the, the there's, a, there's, a, there's a big enough talent discrepancy, definitely at running back yeah. and at other key positions. It's I don't think you can scheme enough, but the, the Lions almost did it today yeah. or, or Friday. They Friday, almost okay. did it. Yeah. So you got to give them credit. The defense so, okay. really stood up. Yeah. So and they. Does, yeah. Does that go against what you're saying? The fact that we were close. So maybe the difference is not as big as we think. Yeah. So when I'm it just saying, we the don't game, have a running game. Opinion. Roland says we don't have a running game. That's our weakness. So we need to scheme around that and and then yeah. find a way to beat Winnipeg. But what you're saying, Arthur, is we don't have a running game. But with the players we have, 
offensively outside of the running game we don't have we don't have the we still don't have enough talent to out scheme and cover up the running game to beat winnipeg the only way winnipeg loses is they beat themselves and they almost beat themselves that's the only reason why this game was close okay the only reason why this game was close that they had to come back with you know 10 points and six minutes again in cfl that's not hard to do really right come on guys right no nope, it's like so, Winnipeg did flip a switch in that last quarter that last whatever minutes it's like okay boom 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 we need to score exactly boom, 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 so done, boom 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 done so you're saying the talent doesn't matter we do not have the scheme we cannot out scheme with the talent we got we cannot out scheme them if Winnipeg doesn't beat itself now if Winnipeg beats itself like it was doing on Friday a bit then we have a chance to beat them yeah. for sure yeah. but if if one if they both play their a game Right. I mean, we have. I mean, I have to assume we're both playing our A game, right? Because yeah. if Winnipeg's right. playing our B game, we play our A game. Doesn't we're gonna beat them? Yeah. Scheme no scheme, players no players, right? So that's the reason why it was close. So okay. well, because I'm just going back with what Roland said. You know, good thing we didn't win the game on Friday because now we can go tweak back and out scheme our weakness. But even if we do manage to come up with a scheme that covers up our weakness, A game to A game, we still can't beat Winnipeg. Is what you're saying? Arthur. A game to A game, Winnipeg's a better team. They know how to win. They're still they're still better. They they can out scheme us, and they've proven it. I mean, come on. I mean, they're like it was, I don't think it was a debate on who's the better team and 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 who's more decorated and who has more success in the playoffs and knowing what to handle. Yeah, but then DC, again, yeah. You know. But then again, okay, that's, so why, that's, why play, that's why we play the games. That's why we play the games. Not, it's, it's not on, it's not all on paper. Yeah, exactly. So anything can happen. And, anything can happen. And and if we're smart you know we could we could coach our players to force errors right yeah so don't don't let them play an a game force them to to make and mistakes. they did a great job on that note Roland. Yeah. they did a great i mean you got three takeaways but yeah. where was that aggression on third and one yeah. yep but that comes down to what i go back to my argument that off our offensive line is not nasty enough because again if you know your quarterback's a predictable sitting duck then you take it upon yourself as an alignment put the russian guys on their ass but that's a, that's that's water under the bridge. So the players, you say there's a drop off between Winnipeg talent and our talent. There's a disparity, right? At critical in, in some key areas and yeah. in experience as well. Is there a disparity in talent in the coaching staff? In your opinion? Um, I guess results matter, right? Okay, results I, matter right and then the, i mean how do we know like how do we know how do i tell like only what i would know is i see every play that was diagrammed and and i would know every halftime adjustment that and then and then how it came about so all all i can tell is by results is by wins and losses and championships right and it, well okay so you say well winnipeg seems to adjust but the adjustments have better results because of better players I think it's easier okay. for them to achieve results because they have better players okay. and they have players in key positions that know how to win. And they have the same payroll that we do. So we, we got to move some money around, but that'll come in a different show, different time like we talked about. They just have more experience. They, they've been to the three Grey Cup three years and three years in a row. They've won, they won two Grey Cups in a, you know, before stumbling, before missing a field goal yep. against Toronto. Yeah. Really, they should be three-time, three-time champs, in my opinion. And you know, like it's gonna, it's gonna take an A game for us, and for them to not have an A game. And to part of them. our A game forcing them to not have. Yeah, a game. yeah. yeah. We force result. We yeah. force them to a B game, which we can do. Yeah. We did. Yeah. So our players, we have good enough players to force better players to not have their A game. Yeah, because yeah. at any like what Roland says, any every Sunday, any given Sunday, yeah, okay, something can happen, right? It's okay. not on paper. I mean, if BC places Calgary, um, BC places Winnipeg, I'd say maybe 30 35 percent chance to win. Doesn't mean that Winnipeg's gonna win 100 to one, right? There's BC has a chance if they play the right game and they make the plays to force errors and they capitalize on those errors, they will win inferior players inferior scheme right bc lost to hamilton who else did bc, lost? <laughs> BC <laughs> lost Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, right? <laughs> who has better players bc had better players 
Who had better coaches? BC had better coaches. I mean, in those two, those two well, teams. I don't know. Well, yeah, in Hamilton, they had a better running back. I'll give them that. They had a better running back. But I mean, position. like, we're talking about third Overall. string quarterbacks to. Yeah. Yep. To the, Starting lead, the CFL passing leader, okay? Yeah. I mean, like, that's a massive cha- difference. Yeah. So, yeah. inferior teams can, and better coaches, like Missimic and RP, I think better than those other guys. In those two, better than Mark Washington, sorry, Mark. You know, <laughs> and better and better than the, the guys in Saskatchewan. But again, it's yeah. not like what you guys said. It's, you line them up and then see what happens. And the team that makes the less, the least amount of errors will typically win the game. Yeah. With officiating being neutral. Great. Oh, no no, that's another show. Another show. Holds. Yes. Another show. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to go like this now. <laughs> but no, again, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do, we should take a look and, and I'd love to see some fans, uh, Winnipeg NBC fans, kind of, you know, speak up voice wise text wise whatever on any of our platforms um you know we've got a lot of money tied up in those wonderful receivers we talked about it in that bye week show status of the lions what have you who's going to be gone next year i mean winnipeg's got a very expensive receiver there but the other two are they as expensive as our next two probably not do we put more money that i'd love to revisit that at the end of the season somewhere sean's going to get paid when he's finished his entry level yep and right, Dembski, he's gonna get paid. He's gonna get, like oh, Sean's go. gonna get paid, right? Sean's, uh, he's this is his second finishing his second year, so he'll get paid. Lawler's being paid, so I think. But then those other guys, the the stalwarts on defense, Jefferson, Jeff Coat, and Big Hill, all take pay cuts to stay with the team. I don't know how much they're getting paid, but they're taking pay cuts. Oh, they, got, they have to be up there. Yeah, yeah, but they're getting they're they're taking less than market. Let's let's reserve that discussion to uh, yeah to another absolutely. show. All right, let's call it twenty-seven nineteen lions. Let's call it yeah. I, I, lions by seven. Really, really, lions by lines. seven. Yeah, I said by lions by five. If we actually play. no, Greg is by lines by eight. Then. Eight. And yeah. what are you lines by? What are there ten? Seven. 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 So eight, seven, and five. Yes. I could, in a very in a very prepped little. It's not, you know, not a confident five by roll. <laughs> well, it's a dependent five. It's, it's depending on it's, it's, it's if, 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 if we play our starters, <laughs> the whole game. <laughs> well, those of you out there listening in Neil's land, please subscribe, like us, subscribe, and give us your opinion. Do we have a Lions win this coming week in Hamilton? Do they have what it takes, player wise, scheme wise, coach wise? We batted it around here, batted around with your folks. See you guys in some of those forums and just let us know what you think. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Comment. Yeah. Thanks so and much. Subscribe, for, please. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for uh, for listening in and for letting us know your thoughts. Uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Call out to Moje Cheesecake. All right. Bye bye. See you guys. See ya.